Hey, good morning, guys. Sorry, good afternoon, guys. How are we doing today? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay, so trust that you all are having a good weekend. We are all excited for this holiday weekend, and we are going to get the opportunity to relax and wine and have a good time, hopefully. So we'll get through this class as quickly as possible so we can start our holiday, okay? And so I would have sent a review sheet um, to persons. And I think, let me see who's here now. There's only 16 persons and there's about 25. So I want to ensure that I schedule everybody for the review sheet, especially the persons that I still don't know. And this is technically the last class. And next week is, is only review. Now, um, I had asked, because I, I, I do have a funeral on next week, Saturday. And so I had asked if review class could be changed to the 14th. Um, I know for the most part, person said that it was okay. I think Indira had an issue. Um, Not in Indira. No, no, no. Indira died with whatever. No, okay. no, no. Okay. Sorry, Indira. You know, I call on you for everything. Okay. So there was somebody who said that they also had a service on Thursday and that may conflict. So is that person that, here? That was me. Um, okay. Yes. My grandmother's my grandmother's memorial is that day. Okay. But um, I'm still I'm still I'm still finalizing some things, and um, I will get back to you by by tomorrow or Monday. Or Tuesday. Okay. Okay. So the morning. Um. Okay. Yeah. So is, is it okay? Because I we if it's gonna be Thursday, we we actually have to. No today. So it's going to be Thursday, 6 to 9 p.m. So persons would know. Okay? okay. And it's going to be recorded. So is that okay that you can listen to the recording and then speak with me if you need additional help? Yes, ma'am. That's fine. Oh, okay. Thank you so much for that. Um, okay. The exam, um, I spoke to Ms. Dean. Um, she, you know, they have eight classrooms and they want to ensure proper social distancing. So they have other exams to be held on the 16th, sorry, the week after, which is the 23rd. So she has actually scheduled your exam for the 30th, okay? So um, can persons call Ms. Dean and make or send an email to the Institute um, to ensure a time scheduled for the exam. Because some persons are gonna have to come in the morning and some persons are gonna have to come in the afternoon. Okay, is, is that clear? And I'll say it again at the end of the class for the persons that are not here now. That's the 30th of? October. Okay. Okay, so That's it gives fine. you some, some extra time. Yes, yeah. definitely. I, I, I hope that's good for all of you. Yes. Okay, I was ready to pray. Okay, good, good. So um any of you that may have an issue, um they are flexible. Um just call them and, and let them know if that 30th does not work for you. But um don't call and tell the 26th, the week of the 26th. Um and miss because I think Miss Dean is out of office. So um call and she will share with you for either the morning or 1230 on the 30th, okay? Because this is a very large class. The uh, okay. morning session, uh, you said the morning or what time do you think they start in the morning? Um, it's either 930 or 1230. Okay, 930. Yeah, 930 or 1230. Okay, so is the evening schedule, what time does the evening class start is scheduled for? On the 14th, which is Thursday, it's from 6 to 9 p.m. Or the 30th, I or, think, is best for me. Or what we can do is since there's a, a if you all want the review class closer to the time, we can just schedule it for the 23rd, which is the Saturday. You miss the 16th and then the 23rd. I, I don't know. We have some time in there, or do you prefer to get all this information right now? And then so why have we can't have two time. review classes, Miss 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 Bullet. Right. Why we can't have two right. review classes? No, that ain't necessary. I just I, asked. Okay. Yeah, I so mean, 14 is fine with me. The 14 yeah. is the 14, fine with me. The 14 is fine with me as well if it's only one. Okay. Yeah, let's get yeah. that over with. 
Okay, so the 14th, uh, it's scheduled I, I Thursday. I want to close it to the exam date. Okay, okay. Let's, let's get let's a vote. vote. Let's get a vote. Let's vote. Go ahead, I let me get you. The, the class, I Kara prefers the class closer to the exam date just because I'm old and I don't retain much. <laughs> Well, Kara, how do you think I am? Am I old too? Kara, what's going to happen? Let me just say something. Uh, what's going to happen is that you would have all of the information on the 14th and you would have more time to study. And then be allowed to have the video. Some of the right, questions are going to require research. Okay, let me see the text. Um, the 23rd, the 23rd, okay, one, two, one, two, three, four persons, and Kara saying the 23rd, that's five persons saying the 23rd. Uh, who else wants the 23rd? Put it in the chat, because we have 17 persons. Come on. No, just the 23rd. We don't need the 14th. You know, if, right now, it's the 14th. If we have more than 10 persons, we have 17. So we need 10 persons to say they want the 23rd. No? Okay. I'm sorry. Oh, let, let's see. Okay, let's give them some more time. One, two. And we can share the screen so we can see this. Let's see. Where are we? How do you make this bigger? I don't know. I don't know how to make it bigger so you all can see. Okay. Yeah, I don't know how the 17 or the chat. Let me show you all the chat. Okay, so let's see. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You need two more. No? So, okay, we have eight, and how many persons? Out of 80, and we have eight. So the majority is the 14 guys. Okay? Are we there? Yeah, sorry. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. So, we there. We right here. Okay. So the 14th, 6 to 9 p.m., and it's going to be recorded. And so if you just want to listen um, to the recording, and then call me and ask me questions, then that's fine, whatever works for you, okay? 6 to 9 p.m. on that Thursday. Okay, so we uh, um, we have a review sheet. We're gonna schedule persons um, to um, answer the questions, okay? And so how it works is there are 10 topics, and the expectation is that you, um, you know, write 10 points about each of these topics, okay? So the exam, of course, we know is seven essays and 15 multiple choice questions. So primarily all of the topics except question two is a um, essay. However, like I said, 95% of the persons get tipping off and failing to they only get one out of the two. So I put that on the re review sheet to ensure that persons get both right because it, it, it's beyond me why persons get one right and the other wrong when the penalty is the same. I did have some persons send in the fines and one or two of you have used the 2000 um, fines. And so we need to ensure that it's the 218 fines when you're doing your research research and that's very important because if you go to google and you put poker tipping off bahamas the 2000 law comes up first okay and i had somebody write an entire essay on penalties and they use only 2000 laws and th th that was a 3500 word essay so that person failed miserably because they did not check the date just as with the 40 recommendations you need to ensure that you look at the date to ensure that the most current um, version comes up. And that's what anytime you do research, because 
you know, I don't know if there are persons that go and clean up the internet and remove the old versions. Uh, apparently not, because when persons are doing their project work, they the first thing that comes up, they select it and they do not check the date. Okay, so please check the dates to make sure that you have the most current version. Okay, and so what I'm going to do is um, let me stop the share so I can see all the persons um, who is here in the class. Um, I don't want the chat, I want the participants. Okay, so I am going to say question one is Patricia and Alicia. So Patricia and Alicia, you get together, you share numbers, you network, and you come up with 10 points on the money laundering crime. And so when you answer question one, I want you to think that this is an essay. So you need a little bit of an introduction, but we don't want too much fluff. We want an introduction that will possibly give us points. And then um, we want to get into valid points that will you know, give us points. So question one is the money laundering crimes. And we have Patricia and Alicia. Is that, is that clear? Patricia and Alicia? Yes. Okay, good. Then- I didn't um, catch that. Could you repeat that for me again, please? Sorry? I didn't quite catch that. Could you repeat that again for me, please? For the review class on the 14th, you are to liaise with Patricia and come up with an answer for question one, and you will present that to the class in the review class on Thursday. All right, thank you. Okay, great. Okay, um, question two, we'll have Brittany and Cassandra. Okay. Sorry, Ms. Um, Bullard, you're, you're, I don't know if it's just me, but there's a lot of static in your, your line. It could be mine. Could you repeat that, please? Okay, uh, everybody else getting static? Mm. No. 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 No okay, let me let me know if that is that better. Is that better, Cassandra? Yeah. 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 Okay. So question two is Brittany and Cassandra. That's fine. That's good. That's fine. Okay. Um, question three is Kara. And the, no, I have Cassandra already. Kara and Demetria. Okay, I didn't get the last part. There's something going on here with my audio. I don't know. Okay, you had question three, Kara. Demetria? I'm here. I, yeah, so you and Kara will answer question what, what three. What am I doing? What am I doing with question three? What am I doing or what are we doing? Your question three. You have to come up with an introduction, a very small introduction, about three lines, and then 10 points. So just okay. an opening for your essay, and then 10 relevant points on question three. Okay. Okay. Only right. Brittany and Cassandra will come with what the law says, because more than likely that is a multiple choice question, and they are going to check to make sure that they have the correct penalties okay. and they are going to confirm it to us. Okay. But everybody else is an essay. Is that clear? That's yes, fair. Okay. Great. Okay. So then we have um, Ebony and Indira, question four. Michael and Crystal, question five. S. Alton and Gibson rule, question six. Shaniqua and Monique Mins, question eight. Okay, 
One second, I'm trying to scroll down to see and write at the same time. So I have Shaniqua and Monique Mins. Okay, and so I have Ebony already. Let me see who I don't have. Okay, if for some reason, I, I some persons are still missing. Okay, so um, I'll just go over question nine and 10 myself until I, um, I guess more persons come into the class and perhaps at the end of class, I will schedule um, the additional persons. Okay, so just to repeat it so we know um, what we need to do. Patricia and Alicia, question one. Brittany and Cassandra, question two. Kara and Demetria, question three. Ebony and Indira, question four. Michaela and Crystal, question five. S. Alton and Gibson Gould, question six. Kendrick and Miss Knowledge, question seven. Shanique and Monique, question eight. Does, uh, does everybody have a question? So, um, Brittany. We're, we're Brittany, too, you, you and you and Cassandra's question too. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Anybody uh, else? I didn't get a question. No, but the you, you won't you won't be here, remember? Oh yeah. But I could right. I, you could still you could still give you could still give it to me because like I said, I'm not a hundred percent sure that they're gonna still do them in the Mario on Thursday. It was still oh. um Okay, so I put you down for question nine, and then you could liaise with the person. Um, I'm still waiting for some more persons to come on till, towards the end of the class. I'll add somebody with you, and I guess you could discuss with them, and they could present on your behalf. Okay. Okay? Okay, good. So we'll see who, who else turns up. We'll just give them some time, okay? So question nine. Okay, good. So we're, we're clear on the review sheet, and we're clear on what needs to be done. Yeah. Okay. Yes, um, okay. Good. Yeah. All right. So well, I have um, a question. Go ahead. Did you send the review sheet already? Yes, I sent it last week. Did Did everybody get okay. it? No. I didn't okay. Get it. I didn't get it either, Miss Bullard. Okay. So. Bullard. Okay. W one second. So that's Michael. Yes. Uh huh. Yes, Gibson Harmony. Rule. Gibson Rule. Uh huh. And S. Alden. And Ebony. Okay. Let me let me just send it right now. So. And men's didn't get it either. Your your check your junk box. Yes. I'll, I'll check. Did you send it from your email? Yes, I or did. I just, yeah, I don't see it. Okay. One second. Ebony. Ebony, that's Ebony Corby, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Michael, what's your email address? Because it's not popping up. Um, Thompson. Dot Michael. Dot AIA. The number one. T H O N. T S O N. Dot Michael M I C H A E L A. C H A E L A. Uh huh. Dot A I A. Uh huh. The number one. Uh huh. At gmail.com. Okay, Alton, um, what's your email address? Yes, Alton. 
Gibson, what's your email address? Hello? Can you all hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Yes, ma'am. Okay, can X Alton or Gibson Rowell hear me? No? Okay. So, I, I, Ebony, I Miss Bullard. Hi. Hi, sorry for that, Miss Bullard. I was trying to unmute my mic. It's T A. Okay. T A. L I N D A, Gibson. Yeah, 2017. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so share it with Alton. I'm sending it to you right now. Share it with Alton, please. She is in the group with you. Okay. Okay. So let me know you three ladies receive that, please. Yes, I got it now. Okay, great. I, I got it. Okay, so you can know, send it to Alton. Yes, ma'am. Okay, great. Okay, great. So, um, Newspaper and um, five percent. Um, I just want to go over the list to make sure. Um, I have Alton, Kara, Indira, um, Crystal, Cassandra, Makik, Marika, and Minis. That's who I have for their five percent. Minis is it for their newspaper? Men. No, no, no. Men, sorry for their five no, percent. No, no, no. Miss Bullard, you ain't got me down there. You don't Kendrick, have me down there? Kendrick, I thought you said you were going to attend Rotary? Yeah. I did on, on uh Thursday, I was a Thursday afternoon. I did, yeah. Okay, and so you get it now. To person, props to the person who sent it. Thank you very much. I'm going back next week. Not next week, the following week. Okay, so you're going to share. Who else is going to share? Let me just put everybody on the list now. You said Patricia, you said. I knew it was somebody else from the chat because they would say anybody else was here. It was so large. Okay, so Patricia, you shared Ebony. with us already. I did Toastmasters on Wednesday, I think. Okay. Okay, so you're going to share now. I can go now. Yes, that's uh, not it. I have a question. Is it too? Oh, yeah. Sorry, I'm sorry. Do you attend Toastmasters for a point? And do you attend, do you go do the newspaper articles for a point? Because I did both. So I, I just want to know. Okay, yeah. So 5% for the newspaper articles and participating and 5% for the Toastmasters. That's how it works. Okay, oh. so I'll go. I'll go after Patricia for the Toastmasters. You are going to. But you didn't get my 5% from my um, newspaper contribution from last week? Patricia? Yes? Yeah, I'm just speaking of the 5% for the civic organization. I have other, I, another list for participation and newspaper. Oh, OK, OK. Yeah. Ms. Bullard. Ms. Bullard. So, Ms. Bullard. Right. Go ahead, Demetria. OK, so you got my participation for the Toastmasters. You sent you, it was you that sent an email, right? Yes, I also spoke to you in class. Okay, just <laughs> double checking. That's why I'm calling off the list to make sure. But I know I received the email. I, I don't remember because I think I sent you an email and say, Yeah, please share with us in class. And you, and, and you did that last week? Yes. Because I just got your email this week. No, the, I was the little the second fortune. Remember that? Sorry, are you the, breaking up? Remember the email? That what I sent you was a uh, resubmission of something. Okay, so I added you to the list, so that's fine. So right now we're gonna hear from Kendrick, Ebony, and Patricia. That's correct. And Michael. Yeah. No. So and Michael. My okay. okay. I, I would like to speak as well um, after everybody, I guess. Okay. Who is that? Who is me too, Brittany? Okay. Okay. So since we have, uh, okay. sorry. Not as on the list too. I can't, I can't hear you, you're a little bit muffled, Miss Norwich. Um, I don't know to speak to you. I, I can't understand what you're saying. She said yeah, you can add her on the list as well. To speak. Okay, so we have Kendrick, Ebony, Patricia, Michael, Devonia, and 
Brittany and Miss Norwich. Okay, so uh, everybody has uh, less than a minute to, to explain to us, but this is a lot of you. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Money for those masters. You remember you said I was going after Patricia? Okay, men's as well. Okay, so everybody has less than a minute. Uh, explain to us what happens and get your points. Okay, um, let's go, Kendrick. Okay, uh, it was the uh, Rotary Club of South Ocean, South Ocean. Uh, this is their Economic and Community Development Month. The guest speaker was Bobby Chin, uh, and his topic was on digital assets. The president, Ms. Wilson, she came through. This is the quick version of it. They have sponsors. They were sponsored by Equity Bank and uh, Corner Bank, and they also had contributions from PricewaterhouseCoopers. Uh, they went through their initial toast that they usually do at the beginning. They have a toast at the beginning and they have various announcements. Um, what I got from the whole, the whole presentation is that we are on the cusp or we are already falling off the cliff in regards to digital assets and we really need to be prepared for it. Uh, Mr. Bobby Chen uh, is the actual, he was one of the heads on the sand dollar with Central Bank as well. And I'll stop there. This is a lot more information. Okay, great. And, and you found it beneficial. I had said in, a, in an earlier class, um, one of the questions in ICA was that are um, compliance professionals prepared for the new digital era? And I had encouraged um, persons to follow the Securities Commission FinTech Hub. Have any of us, are, are we now following it? Do we yes, understand no. what the sun? Sandal, okay, great, Kendrick. Sandal is, we understand that we have our own GoFundMe that's facilitated through Cave of Bahamas, and I'm we have our own crowdfunding. I have some learning to do, but I'm following it. I just yes, recently, recently signed up and got a Sandal uh, wallet as well, just recently, okay. late last week, yeah. Excellent, and, and again, this is one of the initiatives that the Bahamas has or the governor of the central bank has put in place to ensure that we are not seen as cash intensive. And so as compliance professionals, when our organizations approach us with a new product and service, the sand dollar, we should be well versed in it. We should already know what controls need to be put in place. And, and we want to support this 100% because as we know, there are ramifications. If our country became, becomes high risk, a lot of countries, institutions will not do business with us, and then we will be subjected to enhanced due diligence. And of course, we know that will cost us a whole lot more money when we're borrowing. Okay, so um, make sure that we are abreast of, of this new era. You know, this is the new norm, technology is the new norm. And so we can't just say we're compliance and we're focusing on laws and we, we have to know. Um, what's current in the market and, and be abreast of it. Okay, so very, very good to the persons who are um, I'm following already. Okay, Patricia, go ahead. Thank you, Kendra. I visited the Kiwanis. Of course, this is a Zoom um, session, Kiwanis Club of New Providence. I visited last week as well, but that was the award ceremony. It was the closing of the year. Um, so uh, Tuesday, they continued giving awards out to those that didn't attend. And then they presented um, all of their committee projects um, that they have in the pipeline, scholarships, community service, youth services. But the thing that stood out, because somebody brought up about, you know, the um, individuals in the community that uh, give back a lot to, you know, these different organizations and, um, Adrian Fox's name came up, um, speaking about um, how he gives a lot to the community, but um, when they come from a very, uh, I don't want to say it, a uh, past that's not, not a good one, because I think he was also in the newspaper um, this week, but that came up. Yes, ma'am, with the Prime Minister. Uh, pardon? Um, but it was just, just talking about their service to the community and, um, his name came up, like I said, and, uh, talking about, you know, people that give 
you know, give a lot to the community, even though they have such a bad past? Or do you take stuff from people that 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 came from a criminal background, even though to me he's he's I mean I think it'd be washed clean of it after so many years. Um, but anyway, that was the meeting this week. Um, you know, just just presenting their um, their new projects to the to the new board coming in. That's it. Hello. Patricia, yes, I, I, I'd like to know what was the response in terms of do we do we accept um, from persons with this criminal history? I, what, what was the response to that? Yeah, but uh, well, some were saying um, the fact that the money doesn't have blood on it, basically, or he's-, he's How could it not? If you were charged with human trafficking, how could it not have blood on it? I'm just giving you responses. Oh, okay. But okay, I'm just giving sorry. responses. Um, uh -huh. uh, I mean, think about all of the, uh, any charitable organization, do you ask exactly where these funds came from? Even churches, do you ask them? No, I mean, the, the Bible does say the, the, the wicked will be stored up for the righteous, eh? So, but I'm just asking what, what, you know, so the persons are saying, but how do you measure a man by what he does right or what he does wrong? Or what, they were in support of the, they thought the prime minister should really write this letter of recommendation to him because of his charitable uh, goods or, I mean, or nature. Yeah, but he they were, they, well, I, well, the clergy wrote a letter as well. James Palacios wrote a letter as well on his behalf, the, the, the incoming prime minister, a few MPs did, naming, his, naming him as friends, friends of Mr. Mr. Fox. Okay. How do you think the international um, regulators would view that? Um, well, from his perspective, you're talking about, right? From, yeah, from his okay. yeah, yeah, this well, case. Number, number one, number one, he did illegal gambling as well, and also the whole trafficking of individuals. So I don't think, and and he's being sentenced. I think this month, and here is our politicians are involved in holding up his hand. I don't think it gives a, a very good view of us as a country. Okay, okay, great. Um, Kendrick, you wanted to add something to that. No, no, I have the article right in front of me, actually. I saw it earlier this weekend. Uh, being in this class, it's not about what we consider our own personal opinion and what we think, rather. I think it's about the international community and how they view us. Right. We already have individuals who want to take what we have in regards to the, the little bit banking, the sector mm -hmm. that we have now. And they are ready to blacklist us at any point in time. The question we need to ask, are we prepared to deal with that or to write a character reference letter for somebody who may have had a sketchy past or not? I think that we need to be careful when it comes to the international community and the perception of the Bahamas because we're still trying to shake a nation for sale, okay? We're still trying to shake that. And I think that before doing anything like this, I know that the letter was written in, in August before the uh, snap election. Thus, the city minister was not the prime minister. Yeah, but, but he was the opposition leader, leader, so he still, still, he, he still, still had, you know, influence. I agree. I, I agree. He still had influence. Um, because... We got to understand too, one of the things mentioned in the article was human trafficking. And we do know that that's, that's one of those things that the international community really frowns upon and it gives way to, um, is one of the things associated with money laundering. So I think as a nation, sometimes being in leadership is not easy. And sometimes you just have to actually do the right thing for the country rather than I've donated to the FNM and the PLP. So it's not really a political thing locally that I'm concerned about. It's the fact that internationally we are fighting so many different things. 
And I think that we need to be careful of who we associate ourselves with in regards to the churches. The churches now have regul regulation in place now. If you nil off, I know this happened under the Free National, the Free National Movement, where churches at a certain point, you have to report as well in regards to what you are bringing in. And if for any individual who is in a part of a church who views and take resources from individuals who are engaging in gambling and one of your tenants in your church is to go against the aspect of chance, then you get bigger issues rather than a political uh, situation. You got a God to deal with in that aspect. But uh, as a whole, I think we need to be careful with our image. And I think that this was not a wise move at all. That, that's just my opinion. Okay, thank you for your opinion. And I agree 100%, especially since we're like on a watch list right now. and It, it does not set um, a good record. You know, I, I think it, it damaged the country reputation by, uh, you know, being in su support of um, NIGAD or I don't see the difference because NIGAD has donated, you know, he has a criminal history dating back to, to the 70s before some of us were born and um you know uh many persons are writing recommendations for him as well so it, it's you have to be very very careful um to whom we support and and the ramifications that may come with with, with this support um a few years ago um i think leslie miller was in the plp was in power and he was one of the ministers he had I think I had an incident with a girlfriend where he attacked her, and dug up her toilet and her bathtub out of the back of the house that he bought her. And yeah, took that's true, Ms. Monica. That's my friend, Ari. That's what my friend, Ari, is to call. That's true. It did happen. Okay. So he did that. And then there was outcry from the, what, what is the, the women's movement? Um, what is that organization that Sandra Dean Patterson heads? Do y'all know? Well, in any event, after he did that and there was outcry by the public, he went and he made a thousand dollar donation to that, that woman's organization. And Sandra Dean Patterson called the media and they said, no, we do not condone this type of behavior. We are a woman's rights um, um, group. You do not dig up a toilet and attack a woman and take all the stuff out there and then come and give a gift. If, if we, if we, Did they refuse the money. Yeah, they refuse the money. She said because we, we, we stand on principles, and so every man would think that they could beat a woman or attack a woman and then just bring a gift. And so she, she mm. said she is not accepting that as as bad as her organization needs money because they have, um, you know, housing where they they are like a safe house for women, she re refused that money. And she said she doesn't want any man to think that they could come and pay her for what they've done. Ms. Bullet, wasn't so, that in reference yes. to the joke that he told the House of Assembly? Or it was in reference to a joke? In the House of Assembly, relative yeah. to the fact that way he say he knows a friend, if he don't beat the lady, the female, she yeah. doesn't that she something to that but yeah so if he did this thing and then he talked about it in the house of assembly and and that's what's how it all started yeah you're right kendrick he, he did make the comment and, and so right but but that's what he had done some girlfriend that he had who he had bought out for and he he removed right down to the toilet and the rug and everything okay so they i forget what they call it like Forgive this money or whatever we, we 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 do not accept. So, um, if you commit the crime, uh, I I'm sorry. You you should do the time. I mean, a person shouldn't come in and and I guess they could. They they've done it. They pray for your mercy. But again, we have to be careful of the reputational risk of the country and um to ensure that everybody else does not suffer from these recommendations. Because you're trying to help a friend or somebody who may have made a big donation. Okay, so so we all get it. Okay, uh, mm. thank thank you for that, Patricia. A uh, mint. Bahamas Crisis Center, right? Yeah, right. Crystal. Thank you, Bahamas Crisis Center. Mint, Monique. 
Hello? No, Mens isn't there. Okay, Hello? we'll go with Mens. Hear me? Yeah, you're a bit low. Hello. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, you're a bit low. Can you turn up the volume a bit? Let me try. Can you up? It's up to the highest. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Go ahead. Okay, I attended the Pinnacle Speakers Toastmasters meeting on Wednesday. So just a small, a short recap. The president came in, did the welcoming, then she would have done introduced the speakers. Not introduce, not the speaker, sorry, she I, I can't I can't hear you. I don't know if anybody else. Um Kendra, can you hear us? Is it just me? She went low. She, she went I can't hear her. Okay, okay. So let me try to speak up a little louder. I attended via Zoom the Pinnacle Speakers Toastmasters meeting on Wednesday. And uh, we were welcomed by the president. She gave an overview of the the meeting in addition to the speakers. Basically what I gathered from the meeting was that the two of the speak there are two speakers. One was speaking on the first time. It seems to be a series of speeches that they have to do to reach to from one level to the next. There was an opening, we'll get to know icebreaker speech. That was the, the topic of the meeting. Also after each speech, not, they would have had a grammarian who gave them an overview, a general evaluator, I should say, they had one of those that would have given an overview of the speech, where they would have went wrong, where they could have improved. In addition to the timer, they said they needed to have a timer so that the speakers could be on time in their speech, their speech time. Also, they had a secretary who presented minutes from, that, from the last meeting that was kind of long and drawn out. Then they had a lexicologist who always who brought a new word. They bring new words every meeting so that persons could expand their vocabulary. In addition to, they had a table topic. What was the new word? The new word was propitious. Okay, and what does that mean? Propitious, oh God, I forgot the meaning, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I forgot the meaning of propitious. Okay, had, we'll, we'll I, Google it. Yeah, and I had a sentence with it in the, in the meeting too, but anyway, I forgot that. Also then they had a, an R arm counter, which I thought was very, very good. The R arm counter was when you speak too long, you try to draw out your, um, like how I'm saying R now, you're not supposed to say R and you're not supposed to say arm, um, like you're thinking of a next word to say, they go ahead and they fine you for that. So I found that to be very good when you're going ahead and giving um, not only speeches when you're going and giving um, conversations or talks. So that's what I got from that meeting. Okay, great, great, Mintz. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, Ebony? Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon. I attended via Zoom uh, Kuwana's meeting, Kuwana's report on Sunday past. And they basically were um, closing out their year bringing in new um, leaders, new president. Um, surprisingly, the president that will, will be going for the next year is someone who has been a member of the club for only one year, but she has been so committed and dedicated in that last year that they have elected her to be the president of the upcoming year. Um, Kiwanis, I, I don't know if everyone knows, but that's an organization that basically um, mainly deals with children in need feeding um, other projects that involve mainly involve children. But recently, as you know, Grand Bahama and Abaclo would have gotten some devastation from Hurricane Dorian. And so a lot of the projects that they would have dealt with within the last year revolved around that. Feeding a lot of families, they had an, a, a, a group that went to Feeding Peace that helped with the rebuilding of some of the homes as well as painting. Um, Iram Lewis, member of parliament, Iram, Iram Lewis was the keynote speaker and he basically encouraged everyone to continue. Um, he said that even though we may be um, okay, as in we go, we go to a home, we have food, we have this, we have that. There are so many other people out there that rely on Kuwana as another organization for food every day. 
um, some basic stuff that we may take for granted. So his thing was basically encouragement of the Kiwanis existing members and everybody else and other organizations too, I guess, to just continue doing what they're doing and, you know, those who can do more. One particular member was congratulated because um, I think they said two or three times a week, she is basically cooking from her home to feed other households, you know. So it encouraged me as well to do more because sometimes you're doing and you think you're doing enough. Um, you know, and maybe there, I'm, I'm sure there is more that I can do and others can do as well. So it encouraged me to do a little more to help others. So Kiwanis is an organization that I do look forward to becoming a part of. Okay, excellent, Ebony. And I'm glad you're compassionate enough to uh, want to assist and, and join. And, and so I'm very happy you found it um, beneficial. So that, that's excellent. Yeah. Um, thank you for sharing. Um, Michael? Good afternoon, everyone. So I attended um, the Toastmasters meeting for Eloquent Voices. So similar to what... Um, Ms. Minnis said she experienced, I experienced the same thing. Um, that theme was eloquence meets elegance. Um, Shanique invited us um, and she had a speech. Although she was facing like some difficulties with her internet, um, I think she did a pretty good job. Um, if I can remember, I think her speech was on agriculture and she made a suggestion as to what we should do to um, um, get better in agriculture, but I can't remember exactly what she said because she was having um, technical difficulties with her internet. But the word of the day, that word of the day was urbanity, and that means the refinement and elegance of manner. Um, Ms. Bonaby was the Toastmaster of the evening. I think she joined in June 2009. Um, she's an Area 92 director. Um, the meeting was kind of different because that was my first time um, experiencing a toast. I've never been to one of the meetings before. So that was kind of different for me. At first, it was a little bit weird. But as the meeting got on, um, I enjoyed it. It was refreshing to see how the ladies interact with each other. Um, so I want to thank Shanique for inviting us. And I think I will be joining more meetings and hopefully to um, become a part of it because public speaking is not something I really do well. So I really want to look forward to joining the meeting um, to get better in public speaking. So I probably would message Shanique on the side to ask her more about that. But yes, that's what I experienced in the meeting on Tuesday. Okay. And excellent, Michaela. And thank you for your support towards um, Shanique. And, and thank you to anybody else who attended to support Shanique. And, and, and good job. Um, I only heard about it, Shanique. And I um, persons that spoke said it was, um, his speech was, um, yeah, her speech was really good. good. I really wish she had, really yeah, good. I, her speech was really good, but I wish, um, I think they need to probably do it again because she was in and out, but based off what she was saying, she had a really good speech. So yeah, so good, good, good job. Um, good job, Shanique. We're very proud of you. Yes. Okay. Um, Devanya. Thank you, Michael. Okay. Afternoon. Um, okay, so I want to I want to touch on two things. I turn I gonna be very fast. Um, one was I went to Toastmasters. Um, I am actually a Toastmaster, but I am in transitioning into a different, um, a new one. So I'm looking for a new one. Um, so I was invited to Pinnacle Seekers with um, just as Miss Min said, I think. Um, so. They did, they did a word of the day. They did um, the, um, the table topics. I was called on about twice. Um, I was called on in the table topics. Um, she did a really good job. Actually, the whole, the whole Toastmasters meeting, from me being in Toastmasters, it gave me a different feel because it was more creative than what I was used to. So um, everything, everything in my old Toastmasters was a bit, it was straightforward. They, 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 they kept the same guidelines, but with this Toastmasters, they did things a bit different. Like they did a hangman um, for the 
for the lexicologist section. That was really cool because you got people to be more interactive. And then the table topics was really interactive where she she tell a bit like a little um scenario and then she asks like what would you do in the scenario or how would you be in the scenario or what advice would you give in the scenario and that was really interactive get everybody involved um in the meeting even though even though they're not um actually speaking but it's still a an ability to get involved also with the chairperson um, that was miss nadia um she was very interactive as well as in she told a few jokes, she um, she asked a few questions, you know, she just made everybody feel as if that they were a part of the meeting, even though they weren't speaking. Um, another thing that really caught my eye during the session was the general, general evaluation. Um, our Toastmasters, my, my former Toastmasters did general evaluations, but it wasn't so detailed and it wasn't so um, organized. So, being able to see that type of that type of um, organization with with that Toastmasters was really good, and it opened me to um, really be interested in more of that particular Toastmasters. Like I said, I went to Pinnacle Seekers on Wednesday. Um, okay. Yes, ma'am. No, go ahead. You wanted to say something else? Yes, ma'am. Also, another thing, okay. um, listening to the conversations that you guys were speaking of um about the the lady who said about koanas and the other lady who brought about i mean and then ken um and kendrick talked about the um the situations with the different with the different um persons um i also read an art article this week about um his name is quizzy thompson um he was just urging the government to not not um delay or not to not to yeah not to delay the the um investments into Grand Bahama and not to stop all the productions that the former government um government was have already started. We understand the new government is, has been um enforced and we, we, everything is a bit changing but he's still trying to push them to Keep keep with that with that project because Grand Bahama really needs the help and the support that that um, within that within that island after the disaster and it also got me got me thinking of the review question the the the, the IMF IMF um, disaster recovery recovery thing because I started yeah. to I tried to I started to read about it a bit. And also coming in, um, thinking about the the funds for that, and also what's actually currently going on in the Bahamas. So I'm still I'm still reading. I'm still um trying to tie them all together. But it got me to really see what's really going on in the Bahamas because I didn't know we used to really listen to the news or keep up with these things. But now, um, being in this class, I am interested and I am want to learn more and I want to be involved. So. Okay, that's excellent, Devonia, and I hope you find some more like people. Like I say, we have four weekends, um, three we could party hard, you know, and one we can sit down with like-minded people and uh, you know, exchange ideas and um, invest together and brainstorm. And and you know, right now I think um, in order to survive, you need at least five revenue streams, and so this nine to five is just for the bills. If you want your children to go to private school, if you want to go on vacations, if you want to have air condition every day, you, you need a little side hustle, okay? So take advantage of like-minded people, network, form a group, and, and those same people that you hang out with, let, let them help you come up with some ideas to, to generate some income, okay? Mm -hmm. And you said the person who wrote the um, article was Quasi Thompson. Isn't Quasi Thompson the... F, under the FNM, he was the state minister of finance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, right. So he was basically then, saying, "Don't throw away all the yeah. all the plans and stuff that he put in place." Yeah. He hopes that the government carries through his plan, right? Yeah, but yeah, still, like else. his plans was actually like some of them were actually beneficial and could be beneficial if they continue yeah, agreed. that. Agreed. 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 Uh, Kendrick, you wanted to say something? Uh. uh... I really think that we need more bi bipartisan participation, really, if we're interested in building this nation. 
I always reference back to Malcolm Adley when he was in charge of the gaming board under the Progressive Liberal Party. This goes back a few years. And when the free national movement under uh, Prime Minister Ingram came into office, they did not move him because they thought that he was doing an excellent job. I don't know if anybody else remembers this. But because of the uh, party line, he resigned. I think that there are individuals on both sides of the aisle who have passion and the skills and are competent to do the job to build this nation. But right now, I think we're a little bit too petty and we're too, we're too stupid, let me put it like that, to understand that it's gonna take a bipartisan approach to make this nation better and get us to the next level. And right now, we're more concerned about the fact of somebody who's facing legal action, who's guilty of something, rather than our reputation on the international stage where we can really be hindered and hampered, where we could lose out. I'm in the finance and I'm sure the majority of you are in finance. And this industry, they said it was dying. I said it ain't dying, it's evolving. But this is not going to help in the evolution of this in industry until we get a government that is actually competent and who's willing to work and stop being stop being morons in how they approach this country and how this country mm -hmm. needs to be governed. That's mm -hmm. it's just my little pet peeve. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Okay, and I agree with you, Kendrick. And I don't know. I just me and you we spoke a lot in various classes, so I don't know if we had this conversation, but just prior to. This class, I was on the phone with a like-minded person, and she, um, years ago, told me what we need is lobbyists, okay? And so we don't have anybody to, you know, fact check. We only have the opposition rowing back and forth, nobody holding their feet to the fire. They make all these political promises, uh, uh, you know, nothing comes to fruition. Nobody makes them accountable. Nobody um, um, follows through to fact check what they're saying and fact check these agreements that are signing and documents and puts out to the public. Listen, if we sign this agreement, these are the ramifications for behemoths, okay? And so this is, you know, we are here, this is a compliance class, but I always say that I am building future leaders, future leaders who will, um, you know, take our country to the next level. And it, w w it will not be all of us, but if it's just one of us, you know, um, step up to the plate, get a seat at the table, I think we'll make a difference. So, so Kendrick, think, think along the lines of lobbyists and what they do, and let's see how we can establish that in um, the Bahamas. And I, I guess Lincoln Bain did a little bit of it. Um, what's his name, Raynard? Um, yeah, he did, but both of them tried to then join the same, you know, various political teams. So that 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 made it a bit um um you know it didn't make sense. And so therefore we need a separate group that's not gonna try to become the government but hold their feet to the fire. Okay, so I don't I don't know. What what are your immediate thoughts about that? Ms. Bullard, can I just interject? Just just bear with me for one moment. I was watching sure. the uh, debate in the Senate in the United States. And I listened to the Democratic leader in the uh, Senate speak last evening. And as he said, we want to pull those who are at the poverty line to the middle class. And then to keep the middle class to the middle class. And I, I said to my wife, I said, did you hear what he just said? He wants the poor to move up to the middle class, but he never said about the middle class going up even further. Until we get people who are genuinely concerned about the single mothers, the grandparents who are raising children for their children, until we get up to the point where our educational system is fixed. One of the most interesting things that uh, Bobby Chen said on Thursday evening, he said, until we begin to integrate digital thinking in regards to finance into our educational system, because the digital system is on it, so it's, it's in here, okay? It is here. And our children in school have never been exposed to this. It's simple. As I used to be a youth pastor. 
And when you sit down and you listen to young people and they talk about how they, they know about almost everything except resources, except finance, how to construct, how does a 12th grader, somebody in senior high, not know about a budget? These are the areas in which we are failing in this country. We are failing in regards to our educational structure. We're not empowering our young people. We are allowing them to fall along the side of the roads. Our educational system is broken. And we sit down and we mock as we see our young men brought before the courts for stupidness because nobody chose to do the right thing rather than just play politics. That's why, that's why HSBC can say, 55 Bahamians have over $5 billion in their bank because it's the same class that keeps on prospering. And rather the small people in the hood or what we consider to be the middle class are the ones who keep struggling because inflation is soon to hit us in a way that we've never seen before. I saw the article about the multiple of ships that are still out to sea where the goods can't be moved. That's going to cause inflation to grow up. And we- as Already a, it's gone up. It's caused yeah, it already. It, it, we're not doing yeah. anything to be proactive. BAMSI is okay. a joke. Anyway, I, I, I'm going to stop. Kendrick, well, that, that's I agree. the last you're going to hear from me in this class. In this class. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Okay, but thank you for sharing. And guess what? I agree with you 100%. And I'm sure there are other persons here that agree with you. However, we have to send Kenrick on, no. on, on Rodney Monka show, man, or one of them shows. Kenrick, no, you need to. That's yeah, a good but idea, Kenrick. Yeah, yeah, he needs support. Yeah. And I, I feel that, like any great politician or MP needs at least four strong persons behind them to make them effective. But this is what I always want to, you know, I want to share. So we sit down in these meetings, and this is why I hate meetings. We sit down in this meeting. We discuss, we agree, we come up with great ideas, we brainstorm, and all we do is talk. So Kendrick, I can hear the passion in your voice. Please don't let this just be for the AML class. Please, I wanna hold your feet to the fire and I want you not to just speak, but you have identified some very pertinent issues. Can I support you 100% and like in the area speaking here, can we support you into changing some of these things or working to change? Some of these things, or is this just talk? It's it's not talk, Ms. Bullard. Um, okay, so let's do something about it. They say it takes two percent of the people in the community to change a community. Okay. The twenty-something of us, if each of us could work on getting our two percent done, we will we make, can a make a difference. We're yep. going to make so a change. We're let's do it then. Let, let's stop talking, just we can talk. And I, when I sit in these meetings, I, you know, I am inspired. I hear, I get good information. I'm encouraged. And then that's it. We meet again and we talk some more. So that's another problem that we have. We, we identify the issues. We even identify some solutions and we don't do anything about it. Okay, so, so let's work on that. But, but thank you very much for sharing. Um, let me get to Brittany and Miss Nordich, and then I think um, Alden and... I think Shanique wanted to... Yeah, Shanique. Yeah, so Brittany, Nordich. You also have me, Miss and, and Mariko. Okay, go ahead, Brittany. Afternoon, everybody. I went to the, same, I went to the same Pinnacle Seekers meeting. I have a lot of the same thoughts, especially about it being more engaging. Their theme was, their theme for that evening was I size baby. The word of the day was prospicious, and I got the meaning of it. It means favorably, favorably disposed of to grant a favor or giving or indicating a good chance of success. And then during the, the table topics part of it, the, the table topics master, she gave out a well, a range of questions, and the one that I got was, well, earlier this week, there was an outage on Facebook, WhatsApp, and Instagram, so her question pretty much was, what do we need? Do we need technology, or could we do away with it? And my answer to that was, I think we could do away with it to, to the extent that, you know, while the internet is out, we could still go on a walk, 
you can go on a walk, watch TV, read a book, or do other things that you would find beneficial, but then we also need technology in order to be productive. And then I think there was also another question on immigration legislation. So I found it to be beneficial in that it makes you think on your feet and you get to touch a wide range of topics. Okay, great. Um, awesome, Brittany, and I am glad that you found it beneficial. And I do hope that you return and from your voice, you sound very young. So for a young person to say, yes, we can possibly do away with social media and read a book, that, that that's Excellent. Oh. Just want to say, you know, you'd find more older people saying, yeah, we could go back to the basics. You know, when I did all my projects in college, I had the big encyclopedias and stuff in those big books. And so, of course, yeah, you know, I guess the encyclopedia Britannica company went out of business with this internet. I haven't seen an encyclopedia for many years. So, so it's very good that, um, you know, you, you share those feelings of reading and, uh, you know, the basic stuff that to me give you foundation. So that's, that's excellent. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Ms. Uh, I, had, I had one more point. Uh -huh. um, Go ahead. While we were talking about the, the sand dollar earlier in terms of digital currency, oh. I read, I think, I think it was an article that I read in the Tribune business section. The, the governor of the central bank, Mr. John Rule, he was saying that, well, we know the sand dollar is coming on stream. It's becoming popular, but still some merchants are hesitant to use it because they're they're not quite sure where the money is going and all of that. But then also, but then also the the central bank, they're going to aim to make it easier for new clients to open bank accounts by by cutting back on some of the know your customer, know your customer requirements. Mm -hmm. So so you would just, I think you would just need like a passport. And then if you don't have the passport, you would have two other sets of identify, two other forms of identification. Mm -hmm. And then if you have a, a dig, and then if the customer has a digital wallet, he or she would be able to, to transfer their funds from one person to the next or from one account to the next, but it has to go through the automatic automatic clearinghouse system that has to be in place in order for it to work. Okay. Okay, good. Thank, thank you for sharing it. Thank you for having the awareness of the sand dollar. And again, it's not cryptocurrency, but it's our digital asset mm -hmm. to assist with us ensuring that we don't become high risk from, because we're so cash intensive. Okay, very good. Uh, Ms. Nordich? Nordich, not... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I was just kind of the team you're, you're breaking up, Miss Nordich. We can't hear you. Sorry. Hold on. Let me turn my volume off. Uh -huh. I don't know if it's just me. Can anybody else hear? I can't hear. Her. She's breaking up. She's breaking up. Okay, Ms. Norris, try to fix it and then we'll come back to you. Go ahead, Alvin. Hi, good morning. Um, and so I think it was on Tuesday past, I would have read it in the article. I think it was the NASA Guardian. Um, we, as opposed to the sand dollar, we now have a new cryptocurrency um, subsidy in, 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 in the country. Um, as the prime minister would have officially opened the, I think it was the FTX digital markets um, headquarters in Nassau. And um, of course, they would have had like the ribbon cutting, and they would have had like the, um, um, the 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 addresses back and forth from both the CEO as well as the Prime Minister. And um, um, uh, one of the things that the Prime Minister said was that you know, of course, he hopes that there will be like an increase in more fintech um, firms to open offices here in Nassau. And so I I assume I took it to be that it would have been for deal for business dealings. And he would have, he believes that the country is heading in a good direction as it's becoming a now a, a good fintech hub. And um, um, I also learned about the, I think it was the digital asset and registered exchange, which is the DERACT that I assume was drafted by the Securities Commission. And, um, but it was newly created. And the FTX is now one of the first registered digital asset exchanges under, that is fully registered under the Securities, Ex the Securities Commission. Um, it was, well, what I've learned, it was introduced to the Bahamas um, due to the country's strong regulatory framework 
in the digital asset space. And of course, um, one of their mandates would have been able to just be able to um, provide community giveaways or not giveaways, sorry, community service, whether it just be back to school giveaways or um, donating to like community centers. And they hope to also target the employment market where they would want to increase employment, especially in the key areas of finance, marketing and software developing or more so IT. Um, so that was one of the biggest things that they have. For those who don't know, I would have learned that the FPX digital market, it is actually um, a, a subsidy or the branch that is of the FTX trading, which is one of the world's leading cryptocurrency um, um, uh, exchange of traders. And so that was my takeaway. Okay, very, very good out. And again, um, this is the new way of the world. And so if you are, you know, if you're not aware of the FinTech Hub and how it works, a lot of things are similar. Um, and so you need to absolutely know the difference between the cryptocurrency and, and the digital assets and how they blockchain and all of that. So, so, so very good. Um, thank you for sharing. Mariko? Hi, good day, everyone. Hi. Um, I would have supposed to have joined the Rotary um, um, via Zoom this week, Monday, but I had an incident at home where I almost lost my mom. So I thank Kara for posting the, um, for, for posting the fly in the group this week. That's why I was able to do my, um, my, Zoom. Um, and it was also, a, um, well, Bobby Chan was the speaker and he was basically talking about the sand dollar and, and digital currency as well, the cryptocurrency. Um, I had a little internet issue during that time, but I got, I caught a few um, keynotes that he was mentioning. And what he was basically saying was that, well, the Bahamas is now um you know i'm um, transitioning into the sand dollar he said that the payment at that dollars that money would be no more or it wouldn't it wouldn't be any need in the future because we'll we'll then transfer over to the sand dollar and then he also spoke about the um cryptocurrency the bitcoins and all of, of the other ones um and basically he was just saying that how you could Pay your bills well in the near future you could pay your bills with cryptocurrency you know um i'm also a part of that i've tried it before and i was able to actually pay i actually got money from it real dollars from it you know um so it is something that is useful and it is something that is that is beneficial um the only thing is you have the system trading for you so when bitcoin is up and when everything is up then your money would go up and then it's kind of risky as well because when it drops then you could lose money so i also like the point that he made about um like what ken was saying about it being taught in the schools um, that was a valid point. I, I totally agree on everything that Ken was saying. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. That internet is okay. And, uh, okay. Okay. So Marika, thank you for sharing. And it, you know, um, I hope persons are not overwhelmed, but it, it just shows that the class is very serious about getting their points and going comfortably into these exams. So. Um, it may be a, a lot of you that are sharing today, but thank you for taking the initiative, going out there, reading the newspapers, going out there, attending the civic organizations. And, and uh, to me, it helps with you being well-rounded. Okay, and these discussions, they help you. Uh, like I said, every morning the CEO comes and he expects me to know what the entire newspaper says, you know? So thank you for all these good water cooler conversations. I could do minimal research and I can go and just say, hey, this is what's happening out there, you know? And so again, when you speak um, with like-minded persons or executives, of course, uh, these are, this is what they talk about. Um, you know, this is what is, is current today and, and, and these are the discussions. And they are impressed when you can speak knowledgeably to these various issues um, um, that are happening 
Um, another big topic that happened is we just, you know, uh, one compliance professional called me and said, do you know what's trending? And it, it has only been two days. It did happen over the weekend. So just like we have had the Panama Papers and the Paradise Papers, we now have a pa Pandora Papers. So where they're saying, uh, they're talking about um, who has money and these millionaires around the world who are in government. So that's a new topic for this week. And so you wanna, before it hits your institution, you wanna check, you know, um, and be aware of the Pandora Papers because when the Panama Papers came out, of course we had to, and they listed names, we wanted to do, you know, damage control. So we did a check and balance as to any of our customers on this list, we need to do, you know what I mean? So um, just awareness and, and, and again, in like I say, in these um, settings, um, you meet the movers and the shakers of the, the corporate, um, you know, corporate Bahamas, and, and, and you get your name out there and, and you network with them. Okay, so I, I am very pleased, even though it's a bit lengthy, about the discussion and, and the awareness of where we are at the last class. Um, I feel that this is like a wealth of information from the first class to now. So I'm extremely pleased, and um, I hope that the majority of you, we won't please everybody, the majority of you. Um, found it beneficial and interesting. Um, so thank you all for participating. And Shanice, Hello? and then we'll go oh, on to yeah. the lecture. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Ms. Okay. Bullet. So, hi. Who's that saying? I'm Bullet. That's Gibson Roll. I thought you were going to deal with the um, civic organizations first and then go on to the newspaper clipping um, readings. So when you're... Well, I, had, done... I had planned to, but persons, you know, sort yeah, of share. I know this. Yeah, I noticed. So when she is done, I'd just like to share quickly um, my newspaper reading. Sure. Okay, Shani, go ahead. Okay, I'll be quick. Um, mm -hmm. So I attended Toastmasters this week. Um, I was one of the speakers. I would like to thank all of those who came out. And yes, I had a bit of technical difficulties. Um, the team was from elegance to eloquence. And the uh, Toastmaster of the evening was DTM Verna Bonaby. Um, we did, we had a lexicologist, the word of the day was urbanity, um, which is being well-managed, showing courtesy or politeness. Um, we also did table topics. My topic, my presentation topic, sorry, was on food security and insecurity. Um, basically, just to wrap it up, um, it is a big issue in the Bahamas, although it's not much light isn't brought to it, but my recommendation was to encourage more individual households um, to pursue backyard farming and that the Bahamas government should invest more in the agricultural industry. Okay, and it's very, very true and very correct. And again, um, what happens at one point during the pandemic, um, we were sent some PPE equipment and Donald Trump stopped it and he cited that, uh, he stopped it because drugs might have been being trafficked but we all knew at that present point in time, there was a shortage around the world. And he basically said, hey, if America is having a shortage, we can't send nothing to the Bahamas or any other country. So he had not only stopped that shipment, he had stopped shipments for other countries. And that's why we realized, hey, this had nothing to do with drugs, okay? And so what happens when the world is in a crisis and, and they shut us down? Would we, we um, import 90% of our food or, right. or 95? Sorry, how much? So, okay, yeah, so about nine, nine, what I don't know, it's 90% or more percent of our food, okay? So, um, you know, we're talking about it, um, but are we actually doing it, okay? So uh, take, take these things, don't take them lightly. Um, like I said, um, right now in this atmosphere, you have to make a job, not look for a nine to five, but pay attention to what is an essential service. Okay, pay attention to when the world shut down that we were able to work from home and use our computers. Okay, so all of that to give you some tips. Okay, okay, um, Ms. Nordic said she will email. Okay, so Janique, thank you for sharing a very good. Okay, Gibson Rose, we'll end with you. Go ahead and then we'll get into chapters seven and eight. Okay, I just wanted to share um, an article that I read in this week's Tribune 
concerning the discontinuing of the $20 notes that RBC, you know, RBC had discontinued the $20 notes in their ABM machines. And Central Bank had um, issued a statement saying that they are in discussions with RBC, I guess that's the final why um, they did it. Um, I saw also on the news that the public, the Freeport, the persons in Freeport, they brought, um, brought it to the news station because they were highly upset saying that they weren't even made aware of it. Um, I know here in Nassau, it was done abruptly, you know, it was just thrown on us also. There was no um, notice given by RBC concerning the discontinuance in advance. Um, personally, I work not for RBC, but very closely with them. And I myself had an issue with it. And I, uh, being a part of Knowles News, I posted a FYI in the Facebook group Knowles News, you know, just to let them know that there will no longer be the $20 notes at the ABM machine so that persons who, you know, may go won't be surprised when they see the sign there. And that my post caused a big issue. Um, I even received a call from my boss and he stated to me that the director, one of the directors of RBC called him concerning my post. But I don't think it was my post per se, it was probably how the persons commented under the post and they just started bashing RBC, even though that's what they've been doing for a while now. So I had to take the post up, but I didn't take the post down. I just take some of the emojis down that were, was a part of the post. And one of the reasons given in the newspaper that I read this week from RBC representative was that they noticed a lot of persons discontinued asking for the $20 notes out of the ABM machine. So that, um, that was one of the major reasons why they said, you know what, let's stop putting the $20 notes in it. Um, and they are saying to people, you know, maybe stop coming to the machine. In other words, why don't you just use your debit card, your credit cards and just swipe? You know, and I think that was a bad response from the personnel um, who responded to the media's question as it related to why, you know, you discontinued the $20 notes. I don't well, know how I you guys... Have to say on that. I don't know how I you guys feel about that. I don't know. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I feel as though they're basically telling you how you should spend your money. How That's much exactly you spend. what they're doing. Because at the end of the day, if I only have $40 in the machine, I, I can't take it out because you ain't, you ain't giving me no 20s. And then you're telling me you're telling me I can't go to the teller to withdraw anything less than a thousand dollars. So how am I going to get oh. forty dollars off my account? It is ridiculous. Oh, so I mean that was very crazy, and that that was something that really stood out to me. In That's this why I don't paper. bank at Royal Bank right now. Well, I cut my loss. Yeah, I don't like I, I don't like Royal Bank. Ms. Buller, my, yeah, uh, Ms. Uh, Gibson Rule. Uh, let me say this. Um, In our customer service and marketing class, <laughs> we're supposed to be doing uh, a project. And what the bank that I'm focused on is Royal, Royal Bank. Royal Bank has exhibited behaviors mm -hmm. that, that are so, ooh, how can I say this? Unprofessional. Very uh, much. To the point where. I 100% agree. Just say the road people from school sure running it. And, oh, really? uh, no, but I, culturally, culturally, a, a few years ago, Trinidad bought us out. I mean, bought them out because I'm no longer with Royal. And so everything has changed. The, the Trinidadian culture is in flux. And so, yeah. So, go ahead. I just wanted to say that in their defense. So, everything has changed culturally. And this is what you're saying. Look at it, though, Miss Bullet. The top yeah. of the heads from, from Scotia. Look at it. Do your yeah. work. I agree. I agree with that as well. But that's that's the main problem that we do business completely different from what Trinidadians do, and and so th that's what they're saying. The effect of go go ahead, Kendrick. Kendrick. I wanted to hear what you were saying, Kendrick. Um, what I was saying is that um, one thing, Miss Bullet. I, this is my third class with Miss Bullet, and one thing we're always encouraged to do is speak up. I think that if a head of a department or a district head wants to make, quote unquote, um, bring it to your manager's attention, it shouldn't be to reprimand, but rather to adjust their customer service. And Ms. Ms. Bullard, correct me if I'm wrong, the Financial Transaction Reporting Act, I think it is, subsection is either 1920 or 21. 
gives the general public the ability to go to Central Bank and file a complaint. If Central Bank gets enough complaints, Royal Bank will have to comply and start putting those 20s back into those machines. Right, and guess what? It's not even, it doesn't even have to go that far. Royal Bank has its own ombudsman. They could just write those letters in and they'll have to forward them to the ombudsman and the ombudsman would work on their behalf. So the so, ombudsman is here in Nassau or do that? No, it's something it's in, in, right. in Canada. It's in so Canada, it's but there, Canada. there's an office. Up. No, there's an, a representative here that okay. will bring it to um, Canada and, and they will... Like I said, they always are in favor of, of, of the um, client. And Central Bank also is establishing the office of the ombudsman. But like you said, you do send it to their regulator and, and the regulator does investigate. So yeah, like you are correct. Okay. Uh, so yeah. Ms. Gibson Roll, listen, we have too many people who back down when it's time to do the right thing. Realize leadership is never easy. If it was, everybody would be doing it. And the thing is, is that you may be inspiring somebody to do the right thing. Okay, so I wouldn't back off because in, in, in fact, I think you were helping them more than you were hurting them because you're bringing it to the attention of, hey, we need to alter, we need to change course because we're having this, this, this is the effect this is having in the public sector. But I think the old adage is, I can show you better, I could tell you. Yeah, yeah they well, know. Showing us what they think about us. Yeah, they, their landscape has changed. They're no more longer customer friendly or customer service centered. So all of that has changed. Yeah. I okay. Know, um, sorry. I just, Go ahead, add, everybody. I just want to add a little bit to that. And then if it's okay, I want to speak about a, an article in, the, in one of the papers. Um, so I don't bike with Royal Bank, but from what I have been reading about them in the last few years, it appears as though Royal Bank only wants to cater to a certain level of people, a certain class of people, not the average person. And that is why they had increased the amount that you can get from within the branch. And now they are removing the lower bills from the ATM because the persons that they want to cater to will not go to the ATM for $20. But my, my issue with that is, in the day that we are living in, we are moving into um, more technical, um, sorry, technology. Uh, we're encouraging, um, I work in finance, and we're encouraging our, 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 our clients to deal more with um, online banking, ATM, different things like that. But what Royal is doing to me is pushing you away because if you're someone mentioned if I only have forty dollars or I have fifty dollars and I want to get forty because you have to leave a certain amount on your bank account, I can't I can't get it. And for a lot of people and and I um I don't know if anybody else but I live on Grand Bahama, a lot of people may only have fifty dollars to get, you know. And you know the way Royal Bank is just operating to me is disgusting. And I feel as though our leaders need to intervene on our behalf. Um, I think Ms. Bullet mentioned that they are headed by persons in Trinidad. And I feel that our leaders need to fight for us because we operate different from the Trinidadians. So what works for them over there will not work for us here. So it should, I, I don't think it should be a one size fits all. And I think that's what they're heading to work. Okay, and, and let me let me just add to that. What I've seen um, for a few years now is that you know they had announced or there was a rumor that you know Royal and Scotia would have been exiting um, the Caribbean. Yeah. Um, I you know they say it was just a rumor and they said there was no truth to that. However. I don't think, because they would have made, the Royal Bank has been in the Bahamas for more than 108 years now. And so they have signed various agreements and they have a strong presence in uh, their five different entities of Royal. And so to ensure that the entities that want to remain um, does not suffer, I, I think they are passively or 
passive aggressively trying to implement these things that will turn customers away. And then there's a mass exodus. And then, you know, it, it says that they didn't leave, but the customers left them. I, 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 that's how it looks to me. Another thing I want to say is that when you have no seat at the table, you, you, you make no decisions. Um, if you look at the head of um, Scotia, when most of, I don't know who it is now, but I, I don't think it's a Bahamian. Um, he was Trinidadian. And think about being away from your country for 10 years in another country and trying to come back and find a job. Nobody knows you. So you have to do something that will make you very effective or you have to call your network and say, listen, my contract is ended, I'm coming back home. I need a job. And, and you don't want just any job. You want to be the top or the head or the VP somewhere. You talk about okay? Sean Albert, eh, Miss, Miss Barrett. You talk about Sean Albert. I got it on him. I got it on him. Why? Well, I call it. Whilst they was there, they, uh, what was the word? They did all these service level agreements and they outsourced everything to their country. So their name would be known. And when they went back home, I had put so much functions in Trinidad and I had hired so many people and created so many departments that when I reached back home, I am well known. And so therefore, when Central Bank has to approve these SLAs, but when the person at the head of the table or at the seat of the table is non-Bahamian, they are working towards their country that they are going back home to. So we are allowing them to outsource all these functions. And really, they only setting up their self for retirement. And so this is why I'm saying my hopes in this class is not just to teach, but to ensure that you're well-rounded, to ensure that you go into the market and, and, and have that exposure and become the future leaders of the Bahamas. Because we need some of your other to be CEOs. We need some of your other to be the VP. We need some of your to have that seat at the table to say, no, we don't have to outsource this money, this function to Trinidad because it's cheaper. We will find a way right at home to hire um, our, our Bahamians. When I was at Royal Bank, we outsourced our back office to Cayman. We paid Cayman $400,000, okay? They made mistake after mistake after mistake. It was crazy. It was, we had to hire somebody just to man the mistakes. And I sat down and I say, in Cayman, they had to hire 10 persons. That's 10 jobs out of the bar, okay? So guys, like I say, we can talk as much as we want to talk unless we do and act on what we are saying, unless we educate ourselves, expose ourselves, read the newspaper, network, and know the right people. This is will all end up in we just had a nice conversation. And some people can't even take all this talking. They be like, it's bullet just seeing what this class is about. Okay? This class is about awareness. This class is about what you need to get to the next step. This class is about what your organization needs. So you, when you are in charge and how you act ethically and what you do right, okay? Then you have that right seat, the top seat, and you make those decisions, okay? So that's it for the talk. Let's get the strip seven, maybe before people leave, but don't just take it as I come here to learn AML and I, I, I need versus class. No, come here to make a difference, please. Come here to learn. Come here to share ideas. Come here so, you know, united, we, we start. But Bahamians, we are too divided. We, we don't want to do what it takes to get to the next step. We ain't even interested. We really only need a salary. I need to pay my mortgage, my journey need to eat, what have you. That, that's what we're showing up for every day, not to make a difference. At short term, not long. We can take it long term. We have lost the our, our financial services sector. It used to be twenty percent of GDP. We lost seventeen percent. It's now three percent. Does the bank financial services sector truly exist? Like Kendra said, it's evolving. It didn't diminish. It diminished. So you could pretty it up and call it a word, whatever. But again, who is creating these words and and putting it out there? The the VPs and CEOs of that are not Bahamian, okay? And don't have the Bahamas in full interest. I, I have no problem with expats who come here to live forever and they want to make a difference. But the ones who come here to, what should I say, rather than uh, run off with all our goods, 
and, and make their country better. I have a big problem with that. And we've seen a mass exodus for many years. And we keep in fighting and not supporting. And so therefore, we don't see what the enemy is actually doing to us. Okay, so that's all I have to say. Let me get to seven and eight. And, and I hope you found this engaging and beneficial and it just gives you some food for thought to know that entry level is not sufficient. You've been in this bank for 10, 15 years. Look at the VPC. That's you. Look at the CEO. You can do it. Look at the head of compliance. These are the people that make the decisions. So I pray that you are on a journey. And this is just the beginning. Okay? Amen, class. That's it. That's all the preaching for you. Amen. You are still there? Amen. 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 All right. Amen. Let's talk about court Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let's talk about court orders, okay? So the last two chapters, seven and eight, and, and like I said, I, I have slides, I have everything for you all to read today, because I said, these people are leaving this class with no points. And so for all the people I didn't know, I have your names next to these slides to explain these orders, and look, you all, you all was ahead of the game. So I'll go through these slides quickly, and you all just let me know if you all have um, any questions, okay? So chapter seven, of course, we know the proceeds of crime act um, 218, uh, you know, irons out what penalties is should we not follow the law and we get on the, you know, we become a criminal. And so today, Ms. Bullitt is a law-abiding citizen. Tomorrow, the pandemic comes, I can't feed my children. Somebody roll up on me and, you know, offer me a deal of a lifetime and so now that bus driver who was just driving the bus down the road the other day ended up on a high speed chase with the police and how much millions of dollars of marijuana in Kogi had? You all saw that story? Yeah. Yeah. That's for three, three million. million eh? Yeah, that's three million. Million. three million dollars worth and now he I mean I guess he thought he wouldn't know how to drive the bus anymore but he only got three years though. That's the yes, yeah. that's only one bar. He can yeah. to that. Yeah, so yeah, he, he spent three years and come out and 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 do whatever. So he wants to the I see people are pleading guilty because they want to turn, you know, turn the media off for them and shit trying to like because you all only catch me with three million to ten million somewhere else. So let me spend my three years, come out, you all off my back and spend my money when I get out. Okay. That's so, that's, yeah, that's, that's a new strategy. Time. That's the new strategy because, because I get three years, I only spend two. And the big load based on me when I come out. How about how much data and transport throughout the days and stuff when people ain't checking these buses and then because it's daytime and they don't think it's suspicious for a bus to be on the road. So, you know, like how much you data and transport? They probably just get catch because it was in the night. Correct. Correct. Okay, so um, under the POPA framework, um, it sets out the following orders, conviction-based confiscation, which means if you are charged, then we, um, you know, confiscate these goods without the proceeds of crime. So they found all that cocaine in the bus. They ain't only taking the coke, they're taking the bus too. And let's just say that bus was an actual bus, was doing the 15A route, and he was just the driver and not the owner. So possibly the owner will have to come and show how he required, you know, acquired the money to own this company or own this bus. He better have a loan at the bank for that bus or the bus is gone as well. And then there's non-conviction based civil forfeiture. And again, he may just been the driver, somebody else is the owner, but they cannot prove that they had a loan to buy this bus or they cannot have prove that they had the means to buy this bus. And so years ago, I don't know if you all remember our, our drug dealer, Sean Isaacs, now he knows the white major, very popular ones. They had a lot of things in their mother's name, girlfriend's name, sisters, brothers, what have you. And so, so what in that non-conviction, even though you may be the mother of Sean Isaacs and he is charged and he's going to go to jail, if all the houses in your name and you cannot prove how you would have acquired those possessions, is you may get charged but even if you don't get charged, they will confiscate the house and that Lexus Jeep and that BMW and all those Rolex watches if you cannot prove 
how you require this, you know, acquire these possessions. Okay. And then of course, a lot of you did your homework on unexplained belt orders. I did have to send some homework back, but for the most part, the ones on unexplained wealth orders, you all went online, you all saw those cases, you all were able to articulate those very well, and most persons got very good points, so I was very pleased with that. And then, of course, there are investigative orders, which are monitoring, production, disclosure orders, and what have you. So primarily on the, I hate this question, however, Many persons answer this, um, the orders question on the exam, and they are very, very successful. So, you know, I don't know why the question, but it, it normally asks you to compare and contrast two or three of the orders. And so, again, you would start with a little um, introduction. These are the types of orders, conviction, based on conviction, and explain. And then two types of orders, disclosure versus production, and um, yeah, you get full points. So it's persons have found it to be a very easy question. And then they give an example and, and you go from there. And so in my entire career, um, I've only seen, um, I've seen the unexplained wealth. Of course, we have the Michelle Rackley. We have the, what was her name? Elma Chase Campbell. And then um, we've had Shane Gibson, those, um, they've all gone free, but one of their charges was unexplained wealth, like how, how did you gain all these properties and all these houses, but they were let go free. Um, a restraint order is also um, popular for years. We've had them around, but in the bank, um, we've received production orders and disclosure orders. And so disclosure orders are to disclose. And so of course, where I was, Royal Bank of Wealth Management, um, the trust company was being sued by the French government. And so we were sent a disclosure order for our CEO and our MLRO to attend court in France and disclose um, you know, their findings. So um, we had this large account with lots of um, art work. Um, then they sent these big binders that nobody understood the various artwork. And so, you know, they would send in requests to send a piece of art here, sell this art to that one, do this and, and what have you. And how tr trust are um, legal entities. And so um, you have to hire a trustee. And so the ownership now passes on to, from the BO, the beneficial owner to the trustee. And so the BO would send the trustee a letter saying, I wish that you accept instructions from Kendrick Minnesota, who's the beneficial owner of this trust. And so this is what we do. So the Royal Bank of Canada now is the owner of this trust. And anything that is bought or held is in the Royal Bank of Canada's name. So of course, Kendrick sends in a why uh, uh, an instruction and says I I would I wish that you um, prepare or, or organize a storage facility for me um, in France and so of course we got on the phone tried to call all the storage and we got a very large storage facility in order to hold all these paintings and so um, again the storage facility was in the Royal Bank of Canada's name even though Kendrick was the beneficial owner. And so then there was, you know, billions of dollars in artwork missing and stolen, like the Mona Lisa and all these different things for years. And apparently some of that art was held in the storage facility that was in the name of the Royal Bank of Canada. Okay, and so in the onset, you know, the French government sent us um, a freezing order that nothing is to be removed or they had, you know, got a subpoena to enter into the storage facility and review it and they found the stolen art and they froze all the transactions. Then they sent a disclosure order, meaning that the MLRO and CEO had to come to France and give testimony. Then they sent a production order. We wanted to produce now um, wires. Sorry, you're following me? 
You all there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yes. Me and sleeping. Me and sleeping. Okay. That's a good story. Okay, good. Uh -uh. So, so, yeah, then we had to produce. We then had to produce various wires and transactions where we had sold art, where we had bought art and, and put it in the storage facility. Hence, the reputation of you are very, very profitable. Um, made $11 million in revenue each year we was um, announcing or public, you know, public. When we sent out our publication. Sorry? Right here on the left. Right there. Look Cassandra, down. Cassandra, could you mute your mic, please? Sorry. Okay. Yeah. And so, yeah, we were very profitable. However, there are five entities of Royal Bank, Royal Bank Retail, Capital Markets, Private Banking, Dominion Securities, and then it was a trust company. And so therefore, you know, we didn't want those other four entities of Royal to suffer reputational risk. And so even though we were very profitable, we shut down because we would have been in the news. You know, we had already started to be in the news every week in the Guardian and Tribune, of course, in the French news. And so they thought, you know, it would be good to avoid the reputational risk of the other entities and just shut up. So 33 of us went home. Okay. And so I hope that will give you an overview of production. We were told to produce. And normally when you file an SDR, you will see the um, FIU come back and they'll send you a production order that asks you to produce a document or produce a copy of a wire or produce copies of KYC. Or if you have to testify in court, they will send you that disclosure order where you are to disclose any information that you know you are privy to um, for the case. Okay, and then they will freeze. No more transactions over this um, um, account until we you know finish our investigations. Okay, and then of course most of their investigative orders. Most of us. Um, most of us. What was I going to say about investigative orders? Most of us know about investigative orders, like just from criminal cases, where um, they want to ask various questions and what have you. So let's just look at the slides. Just and again, this these slides and this is a breakdown of the poker um, law. You know, it talks about instrumentalities and various different um, words that is unfamiliar. They have a lot of Latin words in there. And this is why um, um, persons, you know, in the legal professional are very rich and they make a lot of money because you have to interpret this law and, and a lot of times you don't even know what in the world they're talking about, okay? And so this is a slide about the restraint order. The court can make an order even when the person has not been convicted of an offense, that he committed an offense and is under investigation has been charged. He has interest in the property and the property can be subject to an application that the property cannot be disposed of, that it can be seized or a receiver can manage it. A receiver has wide powers in dealing with the subject property, including to sell it, but the court can make orders to guide the receiver. Within two days after a restraint order is made, the enforcement authority should give notice to affected persons. Okay? And so again, if you go to the book, it's clear on what is, um, um, required. Unexplained wealth, um, the very, um, I guess, popular case that's out right now, like I said, Shane Gibson, um, Frank Smith, all of um, those politicians were charged with bribery and corruption. They were also charged with unexplained wealth. However, you know, I think one of them had like 30 some charges, they've all been dropped and um, there's no longer a case against them. However, currently we have against um, Elma Chase Campbell, um, you know, her son had allegedly defrauded uh, BPL. He was a lawyer at BPL and he allegedly defrauded BPL. And now they are charged with defrauding tourism. So I'm very surprised that, you know, he was already out on bail for defrauding BPL. This is now another government office and he was given bail again. But, you know, I guess it really just depends on who you are. I don't know if you are on bail, you get bail twice. I, I've never, I don't know if that's 
normal. Is that normal? Does anybody know? I know it never used to be normal. I give you the same charges. That's who you are in this country. That's how this country is run. Who you are, who you know, who know you? Yep, I agree. Who know you? Okay, and so along with that, um, there was a confiscation order because they were driving around in this brand new 2020 or 219 BMW. And so the court had confiscated that. However, you know, they didn't expect this had happened just before the um, pandemic. And they didn't expect the pandemic to happen. And they put the court case like for that uh, uh, conversation order to expire at a certain date. So in 2020, that did expire. And there was outrage because she had asked for her BMW back. And so there was a, you know, case before the court where her lawyer had said, the, you know, the court had no right to um, hold this BMW because the, 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 the conversation period had, had expired. So that was the last time I heard of it. So I imagine, you know, it was during the pandemic and they weren't able to get the order extended for some reason. So I don't know if she got the BMW back or, or, or what have you. But I've spoken to somebody who, you know, deal with these types of stuff matters and who said, they didn't only confiscate the BMW, they blocked the account. But, you know, the court judicial system is still backed up. The account is blocked and they're saying they can't live, they need food, and they've been withdrawing, you know, applying, making applications to apply for some of this money. And I said, you know what, some of these court cases go on for five years. If they do make application in, in, a, in a pool, we confiscate this $5 million. Right now, the court case come back, what could be left? That five years from now, that BMW could be any good. So they were allowed to withdraw from the account? Yeah, they yeah. can make up. Because remember now, they did not plead guilty. So they are saying it ain't their fault that the government take this long or the court take this long to investigate and charge them. And so in the meantime, this their honest, hardworking money and they need this to live. That's their honest, hardworking money that bought this BMW and they need to drive around. But my thing with all of this is if that was um, someone else, they would have been so far in prison. But what I tell you, I tell you all, only poor people is going to jail. And you all don't listen to me. You don't want to go there and network. You all don't want to get to know the right people. So you 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 all want to go set up in jail and pay your fine right right away when you all in the fence. Because somebody has to go to jail because we're being internationally watched. Mm -hmm. wow. Okay? So please continue to, to upgrade yourself on your network until you get, you know, God forbid you stay on the right side of the law and don't have to call in these type of papers. Because somebody calling in favor and, 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 and they, they go and throw it. But e e even her, um, Campbell, even after she was charged, yes, she pleaded not guilty. Um, based on my reading, she was still on the board of directors for Cable Bahamas, because apparently the um, political party, that's the governing party, places bodies on that board. I'm not sure, I don't remember exactly why, but they have about two or three persons on that board, and that person is paid by the government. So she was still serving on that board, getting some forty plus thousand dollars a year from the government. Okay, why was God. that suspended? Again, this is why we need lobbyists. The same thing happened with Edison Sumner when he uh, was banned from the. I guess he had uh, a hand in it because he was shareholder in the company and he was negligent. So his CEO was banned for life. He was banned for um, ten years. And here it is, he is, a new board is established and they are saying, they appointed him. And, and the head of the Securities Commission sat on that board. And so they're saying, she should have had an outcry and say, no, I just, I'm familiar with this case. This, this man is banned. And you, he is on a, a, a new board. Again, only poor people go to jail and only people who are not in the network suffer. So you can commit a crime that. and they can sweep it under a rug. Or you could commit a crime and you could never find a job again in the farms. Depend you you decide which side of the drug you will be on. Well, do you I know think I because we're such a small nation, 
and everybody knows everybody. People are reluctant to report things. People are reluctant to speak out because yeah. you could I, be, I, yeah, I think so. you could be blacklisted for speaking out against. Let me say, our Elma Campbell. She's highly respected in the F and M. She was a, you, a you would be, but, but internationally, you would be blacklisted for letting allowing her to sit on this board, right? So, what is you want to be blacklisted by a few? Political cronies, or, or or by the international regulators, who just shut us down. Miss Bullard, if I may, mm -hmm. I think it goes right back to the, the point we were making earlier. It's a click, in my opinion, in that she can be brought before the courts and still get still get the car back, still have access to the funds still sit on a board. I think they do that because at the end of the day, they can jump on a plane and leave this nation. And meanwhile, we are the ones who are stuck here. We're the ones who pay all of the bills, let's just be real. And we are the ones who have to build this nation back up after they have gone. And that is the situation that we as Bahamians find ourselves in because Her Majesty's opposition and Her Majesty's government have one commonality, Her Majesty. To me, they're one click and they cover for one another. Right, they and do, to me, they do. If somebody's going to be found to this point, and I, I was gonna bring up the fact that I think she actually was a candidate in one of the elections a few years back for the yes, so. yes, she for was. national movement yes. as well. Mm -hmm. And once something like this happens, you need to be able to distance yourself from them. Because I uh, I think the last the, the the previous government made some mistakes. And I also think that what they did in distancing themselves from Mr. the former DPM was a credit to them because you have to be impeccable when it comes to your leadership. You can't let you, if you use a biblical term, you can't be let your good be spoken evil of. The thing is, is that when we start getting serious enough to hold people accountable, that's when we begin to see change because there's an old God in this country that is not going away easily and it's not gonna relinquish the power that it's had for decades. So we, the small man, have to be, begin to hold, hold politicians accountable. I often ask this question on every major legislation that's in the House of Assembly, which members of parliament on either side of the bench has actually put together a survey for their constituents to actually speak their point? And everybody that I've asked that question to, they've always said, not my MP. The fact is, is that who do they represent? you or do they represent the political structure they are a part of so if they represent the political structure they are part of then why are they soliciting you if they're not even interested in your opinion okay and and, and, and you said something the bahamas not only the bahamas everywhere in the world look at the people who donald trump pardoned before he left office wow look at the people Okay, all his cronies, all the people who, who were guilty and, and they never pleaded guilty. They, they um, for months, millions of dollars were spent on, on investigations and ensuring that, you know, uh, it stood up in court, stood up in court for Donald Trump to turn around and part. I, I can't remember the two guys. Um, um, but one was the old minister of defense or something like that. Okay, that's who he pardoned, that's who he let out of jail. So again, there's a big uprising in terms of corruption and, and my cronies and um, um, I can make sure they straight. And so therefore, um, you know, nobody is worrying about these policies and procedures. In fact, somebody told me yesterday, I, you know, I said a fine for such and such, what you're saying to me is $200,000. He said, oh, I could just call the head of the regulator and they, they go away with that for me. I said in your position, you know, I'm reading you on tone from the top. I said, you want me to write that down and say exactly what you just said? And if that's 
how you feel, would you, how do you expect your staff to operate? They don't have to do their work. They could just call their buddy and their buddy go wave it for them. So I say be very that careful. That don't apply to them. Sorry? I said only applies to them. Uh -huh. Okay. Everybody have a friend. Everybody have a friend, but again, just how you in the network, I in the network. Okay. And so we want to ensure we build up our network. We want it strong as Ben Laden. We could do what is ethical, we building up an ethical uh, you know, network that hold, holds people's feet to the fire. And 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 even if they are friend, you say friend, you know what? Um I can help you in another way, but you can't hold this position just because you was a pastor. Okay, you, you have a problem. Yeah, that good Bishop Johnson or Thompson, they was fired twice for Deepin, and then they put him to the Ministry of um, Finance, and then they let him go for stealing there too. I'm certain he's an accident use pastor. And I hope that while he's in jail, he counsels all those young boys to ensure that they don't go back. But he cannot work in the financial services sector again. I'll put him in any church. He can't collect the collection. Ask for with that money. Like I yeah. have a problem with money. <laughs> yeah, but you can't. You can't. Come on. You know that somebody have to hold their feet to the front. Okay, or we we end up making a mockery of ourselves. Let's follow. Yes. Go ahead. Um, I don't know if you recall a few weeks back the bus, what happened, uh, the money bus, what happened in Niagara. We never heard anything about that. Yeah, but they said that it was going to be swept down the road. And that's a, it's I told you all, I told you all, the pig, no? listen, man, I told you all when the pig dogs is on that plane on, on, on the police. I know that, I tell you all, you're not going to come with that. Right, and, and there's a big ring, and there's a big ring, and a lot of times when you see people, plead guilty they plead guilty because they know that that's going to take the media once the media see see them go to jail or all the people who are watching they go to jail that that satisfies them if they backtrack and check that person been in jail for five months uh on a three year uh uh the same drug guy you all check and see how long he could be in jail and he'd be out living with, with all that money so it's, it's a lot of corruption in the system and if we don't follow, like I say, have lobbyists and bring these things to light, they would continuously happen. This is why we have auditors around the world. People, people don't act ethically and do what they're supposed to do. The, the heart is wickedly deceitful. Evil is very prevalent in this world. We let the devil use us all the time. And if there's nobody to watch us, we, we, we go with the devil 100%. In criminality, and if we could get away with it, nobody knows. We, we do it, so there has to be some gatekeepers and some ethical ones. Okay, you can't bring Johnson out of jail and say, Man, he's a pastor, he could be the gatekeeper, he's a pastor, right? Okay, so any, any, we understand these um orders, we know where to find them, we know that. If we engage in criminality, these are the type of orders that are going to be sent after us, investigative orders, monitoring orders, produ production orders, where we produce. And like I said, in the banks, that's what you will see, investigative orders, production orders, disclosure orders. And I gave you all the example as um, to what they were and what we had to do. We had to go to, when they gave us a disclosure order, we had to go and testify in court. When they gave him gave us a production order, we had to produce. And like I say, mostly with the SCRs, it's that production order that they want us to produce the KYC and any information on the transaction that they deem um, suspicious or they're investigating. And um, across my career, you know, the FIU sense they've had these changes now, they normally never re you know reported or, or responded unless. The person wanted some money off the account, and then we would have to ask them because they would add the account fee. So then they, you know, they would ask us. The customer would have asked, "Man, I need the money to pay my insurance school fees, blah blah blah." And we would go to the FIU, and the FIU had to make some conditions. And that's why I say the money just diminishes. By them, it's the court case come up, 
all the money gone. So I, I don't know what you really call this case. But now um, we have had, you know, some cases where persons have had negative media. We find, um, you know, file SDRs. There were three persons involved. Um, the FIU did actually come back in a reasonable time. And of course, now they have a new director. Of course, now the 2018 um, laws are being enforced. And they came back and they said, two persons we no longer have interest in, so you can increase their accounts, but one person is going to be charged. And so, yeah, they, they gave us, you know, um, that response, so that, that was helpful to us. Okay, any, any questions? No, we clear, we have an overview and, and we can go through the book and, and, and document, you know, what is required for each of these orders. Are you going to send us a copy? Oh, oh, no. Right. That was my question. No. No, I'm not. It's just it's easy to break same down. Thing in, I think. The same thing is in the book. The same thing. So just choose two or three of them and, and see what it says. And, and so you can compare and contrast. If you so choose to answer that question on the exam. Because the whole point of the review is you will make the decision that I, these are my seven essays. These are the topics. You may choose eight. And this is, these are the questions that I'm gonna answer. Okay, so the key is to be prepared. You go into that exam knowing I'm gonna answer the risk question or the STR question or, you know, the rules question. Okay, I, I just wanna stop one second and because I see Renee. Is Renee here? No, Renee is not here. Okay, I didn't wanna lose her. Okay, um, Mariko. Is Marika here? Hi. Hi, Marika. Do you have a question for the review part? Um, well, basically what I was thinking, because um what I was No, we scheduled, we scheduled everybody. You didn't get a number? No. Okay, no. so we want you to work with Dovinia. She has question nine. So please um contact her. Is she in the group? Dovinia, yeah. Um, oh, sorry, Devon. Yeah, Ramsey. Sorry. So, Marika and Devon. Yeah. Okay, no problem. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, and um, is anybody familiar with Renee? She was here earlier, but it seems like she's there. No, anybody else not having a question? No. Okay. Perhaps I'll send an email. Okay. So, chapter eight. Hi. And I, hi. I have a question. This is a group thing or it's just it's individual, but we're just sharing the same questions. No, it's a group. You do oh, okay. the A's get together and come up with 10 points for, for question nine. All right, thank you. Okay, great. Um, chapter to eight, our last and final um question. So that means we, you know, at last and final chapter, we've done it, we've um come through um the process. Next week is only review, and so by now we should have an overview of a anti-money laundering, the compliance systems, and we should now know this is too much or I'm intrigued and I want to go further. And so this was only five weeks. The next section is intermediate, 10 weeks. And I think it's starting on October 30th. So if you are interested, please, when you make the appointment for your exam, please speak to Ms. Dean and sign up for the intermediate um, so you can continue on this journey. Okay. Um, anybody read? I saw persons completed their homework on on, on chapter eight. Um, one of the again multiple choice questions that are always wrong um, is the role of the of um, the board or who is ultimately responsible for. AML in an institution, and of course, everybody always says the compliance department. It's not the compliance department. Well, please don't get this question wrong, okay? It is the board of directors, and that's what the first line says. The primary responsibility for delivering compliance rests with the board of and senior management, okay? And it's senior management is the persons that show up daily and carry out what the board um, Tell them to do or carry out the function. So the board is ultimate response, 
you know, has ultimate responsibility for compliance and the entire organization. And you can share responsibility. No, is it a, I, I, I want to say it right. You can share accountability, but you are ultimately responsible. Okay, and so you can delegate your responsibility to the head of finance, the head of compliance, the head of operations, because they're there every day to carry out that function. But when something goes wrong, you have to answer to it. You are ultimately responsible. You will be the one going to jail um, unless you can prove that this compliance person was, you know, severely negligent. And it used to be just an entry level staff that had to be trained on AML. Now, because of a water cooler conversation where, you know, the pastor that sat on the board did not know what a PEP was, now they put out a board engagement policy and even the board has to be trained on, on compliance and AML matters and sign off and even be tested to ensure that they are aware of their responsibilities. Because a lot of friends, lovers, and family sitting up on these boards and they don't know any, anything about the institution until it fails. Okay? And so, like I said, the board delegates. Um, every quarter, the head of finance stands up and gives a report to the board, and they are supposed to engage them in questioning them. They never, never do. Most of them just come for the nice lunch that, you know, and they didn't even ask questions, but we give statistics and um, an overview of what ha has happened over the quarter. And um, they are supposed to, like I say, engage you and ask you some questions, but like I said, most of them is comfortable about you. And that's, that's just it and the, and the pay, okay? Um, again, these responsibilities should be placed in the job descriptions of the senior management so they could be aware what their responsibilities are. They are aware that they are to assess the risk in their department and send this information over the risk. They are aware of the policies and procedures in their department and they are to review it and not expect, you know, compliance or risk to, to write the entire policy and to train their staff. So all of this should be ironed out. Um, we not only had, it was so bad that they were not meeting the de deadline senior management. They felt that it was risk or compliance responsibility that we had to tie it to their bonuses. And so we said that if you didn't, you know, overall the enterprise why that means the entire organization, this assessment had to be into the regulator by October. If the finance department manager did not send in a contribution, they would do a 10% of their bonus. That's how far we had to get because they were not taking it response. You know, they were not taking it seriously and and um, we, we had to get on senior management or we would have missed the deadline. And we couldn't send it piecemeal. It was an enterprise-wide document. So we didn't say, oh, we received HR and accounts department and operations, but we didn't get finance so, and credit. You know, so we had to seriously, you know, threaten them with money, of course, to do what they supposed to do, okay? So the board is responsible for deciding whether the AML framework is adequate and that it provides the level of comfort required. And of course they review, you know, they have internal and external audit giving them updates and saying, um, these are our findings and, um, you know, these are the action plans and what we plan to do to ensure that these, um, you know, events don't happen again. Um, the board looks at the compliance department is supported by providing oversight and reassurance to an effective internal AML compliance and risk control framework. The board expects the AML compliance department to design, implement, and monitor the AML framework while relying on the business to operate in accordance with it. Okay, then we move on to the AML compliance team and you may say why we separated. So we just say compliance, but really in the company, the compliance officer has to um, deal with anti-money laundering. That's completely different. Um, one department, but function. So you need a full senior body to deal with AML. And this is opening up accounts, approving them, um, vetting, monitoring, um, going through all those hits, world checks, and, and what have you. That's an entire function. 
depending on the number of accounts that are open and how many accounts you have. If you have 800 accounts, you definitely need an entire senior body to carry out just that AML function. And then there's regulatory work, um, um, compliance, where we're dealing with policy and procedures. We're dealing with um, all the requests from the regulators. And like I said, um, back in the past, the regulator came in once every six years, so nobody paid attention, you know, and they had sent out all these surveys after the law change in, in 218, and then they called me on the phone, and then they called me on the phone again, and I was like, what y'all doing? And I hear from y'all once every six years. So no, now they have this analytics department that's hands on, and they want this information right away. And so you are engaged with your relationship manager, the, the regulator, every day, once a week at, at minimum. So, you know, the, it has definitely changed. So gone are the days when you would say, oh, they asked for this. We just see them in six years. No, it's on time. It's being enforced, and it has to be, you know, submitted right away. Or and they are slapping the fine, especially the Swedish Commission. Oh my God, you know, the central bank uses, like I say, more persuasion. The Securities Commission have notices and fines. Your name up on there right away. They fine you right away. So, you know, it's a, it depends on who your regulator is. Okay. Um, the AML compliance team is identifying the AML compliance risk, determining the risk appetite, identifying what systems and controls should be put in place, determining the processes that would be implemented to review the AML risk management system. Okay, and then there's the MLRO. So, so far in this one compliance department where there's usually one person, we talked about AML function, compliance function. And now the MLRO function, and in some instances, the risk function. That's four bodies you need, and that's four senior persons with each one having an assistant that you need. You, know, you really need a department. But we don't make any money for the business. So when they said the budget, the biggest part of the budget goes, or the largest percentage goes to sales and, and, and HR and and, and credits, and we are left hanging in the balance. Uh, not sufficiently staffed, and not realizing the, the, the you know, how large and extensive um, this department is and it really needs. So that is just like some of the issues, um, you know, we do protect the business and help them to avoid fines, but, you know, a lot of CEOs and the sales, the entire sales department feels that we you're stopping them from making money, right? So we want to ensure the culture and the attitude is one of we support, um, you know, the compliance department. We want to make sure it's adequately staffed, and we want to ensure that they have systems to support, you know, and proper training. Okay, so again, the MLRO is a pool function. You put the ad in the paper, you hire the person, then you have to submit various documentations to the regulated um, and they check that um, the person is fit and proper, okay? And so there's a screening process that that person would go through to ensure that it's fit and proper. Now, persons have passed the fit and proper test and became the MLRO. However, companies have failed. And, you know, one company I worked for when we reached there, the bank had been open for 20 years. And when I reached there, everything was shredded. We had to build the entire compliance department from the ground. And so, of course, that MLRO was put on a list that cannot be approved as the MLRO again. And you would tend to see that that's the top position in the compliance department. That person can be hired as a compliance officer because only one person in the department has to be, you know, approved. But nobody is, you can't get that top pair position. Normally, that's the MLRO. So if you are on this block list, and then even if you hire that person as a compliance officer, you know, share a negative right on the institution. So most persons, you know, companies won't do that. Okay, so the main responsibility is to receive the SDR, evaluate it, access information from available sources, where based information, act without reference or influence from management. And again, that's very difficult if there's insufficient independence. So you have to ensure that there is sufficient independence so you can act without that influence. And there are a lot of people who try to intimidate you, try to control you. Um, yeah, but you have to present the law and say, listen, I am here to ensure that your company remains compliant. 
you know, whatever you do in your business, I, I make recommendations. If you don't follow the recommendations, I can't make you do it. But when I have this conversation with the regulator, I will be sure to let them know that I made these suggestions and these recommendations and I noticed this and nothing was changed. And so the business is then fine and the business then has a problem, not necessarily the, the MMRO. So you want to be as diplomatic as possible. You want to know that it's not you to decide what the business does. However, you are to make recommendations and review the decisions and ensure that they are complied. Okay? And then it talks about the role of internal audit. Um, the role of internal audit is primarily to prevent, detect, and investigate money laundering financial crime. It is an independent function and it helps the organization by bringing a systematic approach to evaluate and improve the effectiveness of risk management, control, and governance. And of course, from a risk aspect, we implemented the three lines of defense, where the front line would have been the first line of defense for the organization against risk, the front line and management. The second line of defense is um, the compliance department. And then the last line of defense is the internal audit department. Okay, and so um, the regulators are the Central Bank, the Securities Commission, the Insurance Commission, the Gaming Board, and now most notably the Compliance Commission. Okay, in the Bahamas that um, regulates the accountants, the law firms, and the real estate companies that have that corporate service providers are. Okay, that's it. We did it. Any questions? I have two questions, Patricia. Who does the yes. ML, who does the MLRO report to? The board. Directors, the board. Okay, so they report the board, to the board. The board or compliance committee. Now I've had an instance where in my last role, um they had a dotted line to the CEO and they said it was for administrative needs, like if I needed to go on vacations or what have you. And so the Securities Commission and the Central Bank said, remove the dotted line or this bank cannot be approved. And so they don't want any influence. And they said, um, we're certain that if Ms. Bullard needs a vacation, she can speak to HR herself, right? And so that was the condition of my approval. I am now at a, a new company where they don't even want to register me because they, they say that I am reporting to the CEO. So I am in transition now trying to tell the, I already advised these persons. However, they, they feel that they must be a friend, family and lovers, the commission to approve this based on what they say. So we wait to see what happens. But I've been through it before. Uh, technically, the, the, technically then the MLRO reports to the board or the, you said the, the, entire, the people have tried and see that just said, this is what they're saying now. We are going to split it as the MLRO. You report to the compliance committee or the board. And as the compliance officer, you report the CEO. You, you, it's still influence. It's still, it can't be done. You report, you have to have a level of independence. It's been so bad that they even have to put in the law that the compliance can only wear one hat. That means that you should not be risk you should not be legal you should not be you know corporate governance so again you have you you make recommendations to the business if they don't confirm then you, you just let the regulator know and and then it's sex immediately or, or they are fine simple as that so you give them the opportunity miss bullard yeah but even okay okay the mlro answers to the board of directors and the board only but if a general manager has some kind of concern or has a question just for clarification and he sends you an email and you don't respond, you never respond to anything that he asks you. Isn't that rude? Yeah, but you can make a, you make a, a note to, to HR and then when the CEO has a time to speak at the board meeting, he can say, I'd like you all to speak to the MLRO because the responsiveness, you know, 
you you would say that um, usual SLA times or a forty eight hours. And so, you know, I've waited two days and I have not got a response. I'd like to know what is your SLA time frame of providing service from compliance to the rest of the organization. And then the board will ask compliant as to why there has been no response, but it's not up. I mean, that's a conversation they could have. That's a conversation they can have with HR. And if he is not satisfied, then you go to the board. When you have that quarterly meeting, you say, this is just one of the issues I have on my agenda that I'm, the response time is not adequate and the business because needs somebody we, to respond. We, the other managers who are also copied in this email, I mean, we talk amongst ourselves and we talk about it because, I mean, to me, it's blatantly outright just disrespectful. Or if you okay. feel as though you shouldn't answer to him, then tell him that then. I talk him, but no, no, you, no you should see providing a service and, 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 reporting uh, if, he, if he is because like I said I'm in a situation now where the CEO does not understand that I don't report to him so I try to tease him as much as I could but <laughs> mm -hmm. you know and I respond because I, I provide the service to the business but some things that he wants an answer for he does not have the right to ask or say. So it yeah, may be, but now like being I said, in this class, I understand now why. But we used to be talking about ourselves like, wow, this woman ain't even checking for him. No, no, but I mean, if it's a service issue where, you know, he can go to HR or he could just talk there and say, listen, what is the expectation? Should normal service level times for a response is 24 hours or 48 hours. Can you please let me know why I haven't received a response? Or he could take it to HR, or he could put it on his agenda items for the board. Yeah, there's various ways because, yeah, people do take it to their advantage that I don't report to you, I don't have to answer you. No, you're still providing the service, you still have the answer. Now, if he is crossing the line, we trying to influence the person, then the, when she responds or he responds, she say, Listen, I deny this account three times. Now I have to, he does not understand. I'm being harassed. You know, and I've said that in board meetings. So I say that the record will say that, that I'm being harassed. This is what I am to give approval to these accounts. I have not given my approval. I do not expect to be harassed. And that's the end of the story. So they either deal with him or they deal with me. But nobody should be rude. Nobody should, there should be not, not, what are a response, you know, and there should also be no influence over the decisions being made in the, the compliance department. Okay, I, you know, I've had um, a um, director be charged, a very popular one who was on, I think, 25 accounts, being charged with embezzlement and, and money laundering and, and tax evasion out of Panama. And when I told the CEO, I said, just FYI, um, I'm filing an SDI. He said, oh no, I know him very well. You don't have to do that. I said, okay. I filed my SDI. And when the FIU came back, they, they, they recommend that he is removed from all 25 accounts. And when I sent the CEO that letter, he said, what, why, why did you do this? I said, Please confirm to me when he is removed from the penny account. And he say, why did you did not answer my question? Why did you do it? I say, please confirm to me when he is removed from the penny account. And that was the end of the story. You don't have to be rude or whatever, but you know, you get a court order saying this person must be removed. Why are you asking me, you know? So it may be those types of situations, but there's a way to deal with it, okay? So the communication lines must be clear. Um, there must be <laughs> server level times that must be adhered to. Their compliance does not have to give a reason for a decision that's made. <laughs> compliance does not have to say, we did it because of this, you know? I mean, off the record, we do say, but. If you have a sales department that goes out and says compliance, stop it or compliance, then then you 
you shy away from giving any information that could make the company liable or seen as, like I said, we had an account in um, from the US Army where they wanted us to, um, some part of their arms dealership center wanted to open up an account. So of course, that's the big bad US. We get open up that account. Then we went and talked to the person of the Israeli army. And the Israeli army approached us and said they want to open up the same accounts because they have, bad, have trouble all around the world. And we denied it just because, you know, the Israel has a lot of, and Yahoo um, is almost, I don't, I don't know if it's really is fully communist or, but he has been the president for before, and then somebody else was president. Now he's been president for eighteen years, and every time, um, you know, I guess they have elections. There's like an insurrection and all sorts of stuff, and so no, we don't want to do business. And so they said we have to give um, an explanation. You can't just say. The account is not going over. I said, no, we don't have to give an explanation. We are not going to do business with that army. But you just did it with the US Army, and these two speak, and the US generals recommended us. Okay, take it up with the board. You know, so you have to be very careful because you, you could be sued and fine, and you know, you don't want to track any litigation to the, the organization. Okay. Understood. Okay. So, where's Mark? Do you understand? Yeah, Any questions? An essay form for the 14th. You said an essay. Sorry, what's your question, Andrew? Uh, the uh, assignment should be in a, a soft essay, correct? Yeah, so soft introduction and 10 points. So points? The format. Yes, no, you could just list. Okay. You could just list, but a soft introduction and, and 10 points. Okay. Yeah, and examples, please. Please have a, do your research and get some examples. Okay, so we're presenting this or this should be emailed? No, just presenting. Okay. Right. Okay, so you come with your um, sheet and you document all the points that are listed and then you go and study and, and, and you should, from these discussions, you should be able to capture, you know, all parts on how to answer the question. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any questions or concerns? It's good. Yeah. If it's possible, can you send me uh, your uh, grade on the um, the essay I did for homework, please? You didn't get it? I think I did, but I'm not sure. Uh, it's possible. Okay, I'll I, I look it up. Yeah, I'll right. look it up. Thank you so much, ma'am. Okay. And everybody else has their grade or some correspondence, because I, I know a few of you had to rewrite or add some more me. I only got received. I didn't get any grade. Monique, yeah, I sent you. You said that last week. And last week when I checked, I had sent you an email. So if you had to redo, then you wouldn't have gotten a grade. The purpose of the redo is so I could give you a reasonable grade. So I sent it back and I gave you some pointers on what was missing. I say add this and, and, and then you'll get a reasonable grade. Just like I say, this is just practice. And it's with hopes that everybody gets 100 percent. But if if you don't get 100 percent, I I admit I don't want to give you less than 70. So this is why I give you the opportunity to add some meat and, and to ensure that you leave with the full understanding. Okay, so check to see if you got an email asking you to add some stuff if you did not get a grade. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, great. Okay, guys. So um I have a question. I want you to enjoy your go ahead. I was one of the redos. When can I expect to get a grade back? When did you submit? Wednesday. 
Wednesday. Okay, you you you'll perhaps get it before the review class. So okay. it'll it'll be with the cross marker, and then um she'll send them to me Wednesday, and by Friday we should all have our grades back. Okay, thanks. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bullet, I know I just submitted yesterday. Hopefully, I get my grade before the review class as well. Yeah, you'll get it Friday. Okay. Sorry, the you. review class. Sorry, the review class is Thursday. So yeah, yeah, everybody has to get it on Wednesday. So I'll send a note. Yeah, everybody has to get it on Wednesday. So yeah, okay, Wednesday. Thanks. Yeah. But everybody who even submitted last night got their grade back today. When did you submit, Gibson? I submitted yesterday afternoon. I think that would have been after five before. Okay, I but you, you should have gotten your grade back today. Okay, I'll check it after class. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, because everything at the cross marker was traveling. And uh, and this morning she sent me all sorts of grades. And I, I went through them and I, I double checked them to make sure I agree. And I submitted them this morning. So check. I don't have any grades outstanding. Um, right now, Cara too, you need to check. A, a lot of persons got grades this morning. So Cara, check. Miss Fuller. Yeah? Um, you said the review was on the 14th, right? Yeah, the 14th from 6 to 9 p.m. That's Thursday. Is it a question due on October 15th? Yeah. So if I'm gonna do that question, I won't get my grade before the review. No. Okay, because I know that's what I'm And that you send it early, but you'll get it before the exam. You don't necessarily I, need it before the you need it before the exam, right? To know if you're on the right track, right? No, I just wanted to make sure because I heard you said everybody will get down um before Which what I have right now, what what I already okay. have in my possession. Okay. Yeah. Miss Bullard. Hi. My last question asking for a friend. <laughs> uh Will we know our grades uh, going into the exam or before that? Um, but why, email. why would you, you would know if you got 100% on your um, homework, then you have 20% already. If you participate in class, yeah, you know that you got the 5%. If you went to uh, your civic organization, you are now at 30%. So okay. you should know that you are comfortably sitting in the exam right now. Okay. And if you didn't uh, get the full 100% on your homework, you could just um, um, do the calculation to divide it by 0.20 and, and, and it'll tell you you have 18 points or 16 points or, or whatever. So add that to 10, if you have the other 10 already. Is that clear? Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay, great. Hmm. Great. Okay, any more questions or concerns? Um, Ms. Bullard, can I just yeah. speak to you after everyone logs off, please? Sure, I'll stay on. Bullard, I think I need that too. Okay, <laughs> you'll have to give Ms. Pa Ms. Bullard have to take a bathroom break, so you're going to give me two minutes to yeah, run this bathroom, and I'll I'll come right back. Give you a water break. Ms. Bullard, <laughs> Jan, my water right here. I sip in in zero. Yeah? <laughs> Um, for that presentation next week for the review, how long is each person of well, each group? Yeah, please don't be more than 10 minutes. 10 minutes? I was thinking five. Man, I was coming, I was coming up here. She said two, two minutes, and I do two minutes, and you should be the one good. Yeah, you, you, do, you do no more than 10. I mean, um, five is fine. Uh, some persons may still, let me see if I, I, I think I would have met everybody. When I lay down three o'clock in the morning, I wake up, I say, okay, I know all these names. So I, I think everybody made, made a mark today. On, on the last day, everybody got all their points. So next time I get scared for you all, but it's so much people, so. I say you all have until the first class, 10 people, first 10 people in the first, 10 people in the second, whatever, because I sure some people are rolling over with all these uh, newspaper clippings and, and civic organizations, but I, I found them all interesting and I, I'm happy you all got to it. But please don't but all for the last but day. But the choky part, you all. You all see um, 90 notes lock up an ATL talking about he. They wouldn't let him go to the doctor because he feel as though he have this pain in his stomach and he didn't know if admitting the drugs 
to, to drug trafficking with a Canadian to a death sentence during the corona and he can't get. I was like, oh, oh see, don't do it, please. <laughs> he need to go see if he have call he, he have colon cancer because one of his brothers had colon cancer. He ran out of bunch of nonsense in the newspaper too. I don't know what this problem is. I have a question. Yeah. Anybody see this video going around with this guy um damaging the staff? Oh, you are give me a second. Uh, yes. I just saw that about about a couple minutes ago. Okay, Miss Well, let's say give a second. Let it, I give a second. Continue to talk. Continue to talk. Uh, I go into the bathroom. So that I'll happened be... today. Yeah, that happened know, today. Yeah, that happened today. Well, Christopher Columbus needed to come down there from long time. Now let's be real now. Christopher Columbus right caused all this immigrant this immigration problem, you know. Think about it. He started this nonsense. Why do you think they, well, they he started this this nonsense? Them they come into the Bahamas on some kind of boat and voyage. Who do you think started that? Him watching us right just, now. And they just continue in this foolishness. That's why the country ain't you know be no care. They were it's just like that Christopher Columbus mentality that <laughs> Manuel on bad. And <laughs> <Is there anything? laughs> <laughs> I need to behave. Man, if the truth is the truth, I speak the truth. That's why a lot of people can't handle me. She's right, though. It's just that he just probably didn't do it the right way that it needed to be done. But she did. She is. She is right. They, we do who I to tell them my, who I I was saying I to play crazy. Who once the police come out and start acting a certain way, because I'm gonna get locked up. I could start playing crazy just I just I see that police siren come in. I would have a seizure or something all of a sudden. You should you should watch the video. He literally did that. Oh see, I can't watch the video because we're in class, but someone that shoot me one or two hands. Okay, thank you. I'm back. I see y'all having a lively. I can hear y'all all the way from the bathroom. <laughs> I see y'all having a provocative conversation. That's good. That's good. Okay, so um, if there are no further questions or concerns, just just um try to enjoy your weekend, relax and unwind. Um, hopefully you put in your days. You have your company support, study leave, or if you feel like you know. You can take a vacation day, but the key is to be organized. You're already going into the exam comfortably with the 30%, so that should be relieving. And um, you will organize yourself after the review and say, listen, these are my seven essays. I know what I'm doing. Um, 20 minutes for each essay and 20 minutes for the multiple choice. And like I said, my success rate is like 85, 90%. So, and this class has been a very intellectual class, so I have no worries. I'm quite confident that all of you will be successful. And I do hope to see some of you in intermediate. That starts, I think, on the 30th. So remember to speak to Ms. Dean about that if you're going to continue on this journey. Okay? Ms. So, one quick question, please. Mm -hmm. Will we have our final grade, class grade, before the intermediate class? Yeah, but then the immediate class starts or the 30th year exam is or the 30th. I'm normally two um two weeks marking and cross marking and 25 persons in this class and so therefore I doubt it. Sorry, normally yeah. would yeah, but I doubt so it. You, so we would be so able they to allow join us, the they allow us to yeah to register. Yeah, so I what Miss Dean normally does is she she wants to see what grade you're going into the exam, whether you have your thirty percent or not. And normally, if you have your thirty percent, they you know, or, or at least twenty five, they you go to the next step. Understood. Yeah. Thank you. Is yeah. the I have a question. Is the exam on Zoom? No, it's in class. So you call the institute and you make an appointment to either go in either nine thirty or twelve thirty on the thirty day. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let me see. Is Renee here yet? Is, is Renee come back? No? Okay. And everybody who's here now has a scheduled question for the review class. Ms. Bullard. Yes? 
I was looking, I was looking for my question partner on email here, but I don't see it. And I think she's left the group. Let me let me give it this book. Let me look at the question. Her name is Alice Alicia Moss, I think. Yeah, Alicia. Yeah. yeah I'll, I'll send you an email address. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Ms. Bullard, I sent you a, a, a direct message. Yeah, I have your number. So, I mean, if you want to stay on, just like Brittany does, you can do that. Or you want me to call you? You can call me, please. I can call you tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Um, Ms. Bullard. Good evening, all. Yes. Uh, yeah, let's let everybody in who wants to stay and ask questions. That's fine too. Have a fabulous weekend. It's a holiday. Go, go out. Sorry, enjoy. Bye bye. Might at least yeah. try to bring okay, down the fire. Okay, I'm gonna be All right. Be safe. Okay, Brittany, go ahead. Um. Okay, Miss Um Miss Bullard, I well, I apologize for not making you aware of this. Uh, well, at the beginning of like the first class, but I have, well, yeah, it's a medical condition. I have the condition called cerebral palsy. So my, my, my motor skills are kind of slower than everybody else's. So that just means I write slower, okay. but how, but how, how would that impact me in terms of being able to, to do the exam on the 30th? Okay. Let me give me give me a telephone number. Let me call you. Okay. Um, four three seven. Four three seven. Uh huh. Five two. Five two. One three. One three. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Give me. I'll I'll call you, Brittany, so we can just I'll have to speak to Miss Dean as well. Okay. Okay. So I I'll call you back and we'll discuss that. All right. Thank you, Miss Bullock. Okay. Thank you too. Okay. Who who else has a question? Hey, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, actually, I, I was kind of a little lost when I started hearing you talk about homework in class. Why? Why you was huh? lost? One piece of homework was due. You did your homework. Why you was lost? Which one? Because you did the okay. You did the the homework that was due on October the fifteenth. Okay, right? that's okay. That's yeah. what you did. Right. right. So mm -hmm. I said this this is why you have not gotten a grade because it's not in the keywords yet to be marked. You did right. the right homework. And so I asked you, do you want to do another homework or do you want that to be marked on October the 15th? Okay, okay. So you answer me, do you want that to be marked? Because I said you have the option to do two, three, and four is still left. I mean two and three was still left. But you didn't respond. So you want that to be marked on October the 15th? Yes. So you might have gotten a grade for that already, though. So check your email for this morning. I think I can. Let me see. You just send it in. It, went, it came in today, just like I said, because it was not in the When question one was two, you did question four. But question four, it, it, we have 25 persons in this class. Okay. And this is not the only class. So we were only, we, we have a schedule like that. So the lecture also is in overwhelm. So we have 50 pieces of homework marking every week. So we have to, you know, go with a schedule. It doesn't have to be marked oh. and cross marked. Okay, okay. Yeah. But, um, so, I didn't receive an email as yet, but. You didn't. Okay. Check, check, check. I, I, almost I just look at it. I just look at it. I am almost certain I because I spoke to her about that and I said please I please look at it because you know I explained to her what happened. Mm -hmm. I just check in my email. Okay. So the on the the only thing I have left now is the newspaper. Why um, you have the newspaper? Huh? You read the newspaper for the four weeks? I don't do news. Let me tell you, I have an issue. Mm -hmm. I realize I, I, okay. I realize I can pull it up on, I can pull it up online now. <laughs> but because I don't like newspaper, I don't like touching it. That does something to me. So 
what I can do. Um, I know that's not that I'm not trying to make an excuse. It's not an excuse. But yeah, I, I did have that issue with me. So that's why I never really even go and went to say buy a newspaper or whatever. No. But I will make it my business because I can actually pull it up online. Online, right. You're gonna have to buy. Okay. Okay. So, so next next week for the newspaper. Yes, I will do that. Next okay. Week. Yeah, you should get your grade by Wednesday. That's for the for the essay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, Miss Oh, sorry, sorry. Go ahead, Demetra. Sorry. Okay, so that's I base. Okay, I would be on track with everything, with all of the points, the homework, the the um, networking, and discussing in class. When I say networking, you know, who's master's class. And the newspaper clipping. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But you've been participating, so I'm familiar with your name. So thank you so much, Miss Bullard. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> Alrighty, okay, so, so that's well, it, I'm or done. you want to say something else? You're done. Okay, good. I'm done. Okay. So I could leave I could leave. You can now. leave. Yeah, you can leave. All right. Enjoy your holiday. Be safe. You too. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi, Ms. Bullock. Yeah. Um, the lady's name is Crystal Duncan with the K. Mm -hmm. Okay, then, all right. That's all I wanted to find out. She yeah. was in the Google Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Take care. Thanks. All righty, you too. All righty, you too. Thanks. Marisa? Hi, Ms. Bullock. Hi. The only thing I, I'm, well, I know I still have the essay that I have to do, but I, like I told you, I had a rough week this week with my mom, almost dying, and that was crazy. Yeah, sorry to hear that. I'm happy that you made it through. Yeah, she's still in the hospital now. Okay, but just take your time, sweetie, because, you know, I want you to do your best, and there's no rush. It's just that between now and the 30th, I, I just want to ensure you sit comfortably in the exam, and especially if you need feedback. So, Take another week of just get your life settled first and then worry about the homework, okay? Yes. And you uh, won't take off any points. Okay, I just also wanted to just, I know I probably have the newspaper um, article that I haven't read, but I did read it today. Mm -hmm. um, just basically- Okay, so share it, share it next week, share it next week. Next week is good? Yeah, next week is fine. Okay. That's okay. this is during the review class, right? Yeah. And then the other classes will be meeting up with um the young lady, Miss Ramsey. Mm hmm But um, you need to meet with her before Thursday. I mean, yeah, so I just message yeah. her. Okay. Just send a message. Right. Okay. So, oh, okay, well, so you should be essay. fine. I'll have the essay to you by Monday. Okay, that's fine. But I want you to like I take some time and then why and then focus on answering your review question. And like I say. Since the exam is pushed to the 30th, you have a week or so where you would still have enough time to get feedback. Okay, so just take it easy. All right, and thank you. better first, okay? All right, thank you. Okay, sweetie, take care. You too. Okay, bye. Bye.